Hmm. Are we on? Hello? All set. अरे एक सेकेंड इसको म्यूट कर लो गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी गुड इवनिंग माय लविंग स्टूडेंट्स मेरे प्यारे 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 बच्चों गुड इवनिंग वेरी वेरी गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू ऑल हाउ इज एवरीथिंग कैसा चल रहा है जिंदगी कैसी चल रही है पढ़ाई कैसी चल रही है हाउ इज लाइफ हाउ आर स्टडीज एंगजाइटी थोड़ी थोड़ी एंगजाइटी है मजा लो इस एंगजाइटी का एंजॉय दिस एंगजाइटी स्ट्रगलिंग पीरियड है ना सिक्सटीन डेज बिफोर एग्जाम सोलह दिन बचे हैं बेटा सोलह दिन सोलह दिन में तो दुनिया बदल देंगे हम अ लॉट कैन चेंज इन सिक्सटीन डेज बहुत कुछ बदल जाएगा फुल ऑफ एंगजाइटी जय राम जी की जय राम जी की जय राम जी की अभी देखो सोलह दिन में सिक्सटीन डेज A lot will change in sixteen days. क्या नहीं हो सकता यार चाय के टेबल से होटो तक जाने में जब दुनिया बदल सकती है तो सोलह दिन में सोलह दिन में तो पत्थर खोद के पानी निकाल देंगे हम सोलह दिन में वो कर देंगे हम वो करके दिखा देंगे कि रिजल्ट चेंज करके रख देंगे जो एंग्जाइटी है ना जो डर लग रहा है ना सिर्फ एक चीज का प्रॉमिस कर दो बस मुझे आज जस्ट प्रॉमिस मी वन थिंग टुडे जस्ट प्रॉमिस मी वन थिंग टुडे हिम्मत नहीं हारनी है मेहनत करनी है डोंट बी अफ्रेड ऑफ योर स्ट्रगल्स एक छोटी सी बात है ना जो पानी से नहाते हैं जो पानी से नहाते हैं वो लिबास बदलते हैं और जो पसीने से नहाते हैं वो इतिहास बदलते हैं वी विल चेंज द हिस्ट्री सिक्सटीन डेज दे आर मोर देन अनफ नो एंगजाइटी We have to make the daily targets. आज सुबह से शाम तक क्या पढ़ना है कितना पढ़ना है We have to achieve this till today evening, and we have to celebrate with a smile. आ यार आज ये सोचा था पढ़ लिया हो गया काम We studied it. आज ये सोच के बैठे थे यार अरे इस गाय नहीं I thought the menstrual cycle, then polycystic ovarian syndrome, and then actions of estrogen, progesterone, congenital malformations of uterus. नहीं यार आज vaginitis भी कर लूँगा PID भी देख लूँगा genital TB also, fibroids also, prolapse also, and this much for today. And in the evening, celebrate it. You did it. You enjoyed it. Why to worry, yar? Why anxiety? Everyone has to prepare nineteen subjects. We all are facing the same issue. We all are passing through the same time period. We all are passing through the same phase. Jite ga kahan? What is the differentiating feature? What is going to make the difference? Our mental status, our mental state. What is going to happen on exam day? It is not only your preparation which is going to matter on that day. It is your mental state on that day. How you are reacting to questions? Questions will start flashing on your computer screen. Or if suppose there is a tough question, oh, padha tha yar, kabi padha tha, padha tha. Dimag mein aaya tha, humne padha tha. Ye question to padha hua lag raha. Lekin yar, I am not sure. I am not sure what should be the answer. I am able to rule out this one choice, second choice, but I am stuck between the two. Just cool down, cool down, and try to have a recall. Padha kahan pe tha? 
where was i sitting at that time where was i sitting at that time which cloth was i in a t-shirt or uh, i was in a shirt where was i sitting on a chair on the bed oh that was in that notes so, so try to have a proper recall from exactly where were you sitting at that time what were you wearing at that time were you eating some poha were you eating some idli at that time uh, when this was asked all of the following are increased in polycystic ovarian syndrome except or a 23 year old girl presents with sudden onset of hirsutism acne and and hoarseness of voice what is most likely oh my god yaar amit sir told us uh, this should be polycystic ovarian syndrome this looks like pcos but sala but but i am i am getting confused there is the option there androgen secreting ovarian tumor oh my god amit sir told something amit sir told something what amit sir told if word sudden is written if word sudden is written in the question and if features are more virilizing this can't be a polycystic ovarian syndrome it has to be a androgen secreting ovarian tumor so 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 go back go back where were you where were you was it a online class or it was a offline class you 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 were hearing amit sir you were sitting in your drawing room in your study room where were you at that time so try to have a recall where were you exactly and then you will get a proper beautiful recall and for this recall beta we have to build a 16 lane golden highway i always call it in my classes it is a 16 lane golden highway and what is going to happen on this 16 lane golden highway we have a beautiful recall from this 16 lane golden highway recall as a chal ke aayega beta tairta hua tairta hua recall will come as if it is swimming and it will enter our brain it will be absorbed and we will mark the correct answer so there the saying no beta jeetne wale koi alag kaam nahi karte wo har kaam ko alag tarike se karte hain so winners never do different things they do things differently so we have to do the things differently that's all is the difference chalo ji chalo shuru kare let's start Let's start with question number one. A twenty-seven year old lady presents with seven weeks amenorrhea. Right adrenal mass measuring three centimeter on ultrasonography. Beta HCG is twenty-eight hundred milli international units per ml. No cardiac activity visualized in adrenal mass. What is the best management for her? See. she is a 27 year old lady and there is the amenorrhea of 7 weeks she is having amenorrhea for how much time beta 7 week and there is the right adrenal mass and the size of mass is 3 cm beta hcg levels are also given they are raised they are 2800 so this is a case of ectopic pregnancy there is no confusion in that what examiner is uh, telling us that there is no cardiac activity in this mass so what should be the management protocol here what is the best management for her expectant management option b is self injectomy option c is intramuscular methotrexate option d is linear salpingostomy yes please answer please answer what should be the answer very nice very nice very nice c c d no no why 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 someone is saying d linear salpingostomy no 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 why why someone is saying d the answer is c why beta see how, how we treat ectopic pregnancy it is divided in three parts expectant management medical management and surgical management what are the criteria as beta expectant management is done if beta hcg levels are less than 1000 milli international units per ml fine and medical management is done if beta hcg levels are more than 1000 but they are less than 5000 milli international units per ml and here beta hcg is 2800 so it falls between 1000 and 5001 so that's a criteria for medical management second criteria for medical management is size of ectopic mass should be less than 3.5 to 4 cm and what is the size given here size given here is 3 cm so that's again a indication for medical management fine no cardiac activity 
that's again an indication for medical management. So size of mass less than 4 cm, cardiac activity absent, second indication for medical management and beta SCG between 1000 to 5000. So all these three clues which are given by examiner falls under the category of which management beta? Medical management. So expectant management is ruled out. This can't be the answer. Self-injectomy, when we do self-injectomy for ectopic pregnancy? When we do self-injectomy to treat ectopic pregnancy? Self-injectomy is done. If it is a case of, come on, come on, speak out, speak out. If it is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy or unruptured ectopic pregnancy? If it is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy. In ruptured ectopic pregnancy, what is the management? Laparotomy and then we do self-injectomy. Medical management, drug of choice for medical management of ectopic pregnancy is intramuscular methotrexate. What is the dose, beta? What is the dose? Come on, speak out. What is the dose? Dose of methotrexate. Please, 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 please. Medical management, that's for sure. We are done. We are done. There are three clues. Beta SCG between 1000 and 5000. Cardiac activity is absent. And size of ectopic mass is less than 4 cm. So these are supporting evidence for this, for medical management of ectopic pregnancy. But what is the dose of methotrexate? Anyone? Anyone? Very nice. Very nice. 50 milligram. 50 milligram. 50 milligram intramuscular. Fine. Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me after giving methotrexate, after giving methotrexate, when we have to do beta SCG levels? Come on. Come on. After giving methotrexate, when we have to assess for beta SCG levels on day 4 and day 7, done, 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 day 4 and day 7. And now what we have to see on day 7? On day 7, we have to see whether there is fall in serum beta SCG of more than, that's your MCQ, that's your MCQ, fall in serum beta SCG, if it is more than how much? If it is more than how much? 15%. Our job is done, 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 done then there is no need to repeat methotrexate. We are done here. Fine. Then what we are doing? We are doing weekly beta SCG estimation till three consecutive beta SCG reports are negative. And if after giving first dose of methotrexate, fall in serum beta SCG levels beta, it is less than 15%. If it is less than 15%, our job is not done. Then we have to repeat methotrexate. Can anyone tell me how many maximum doses of methotrexate can be given? A fall in serum beta SCG is less than 15%. How many maximum doses of methotrexate can be given? Three doses. Maximum, this is the MCQ beta. This is the question. How many maximum doses of methotrexate can be given? Three doses can be given. And if there is no response, even after giving three doses, we switch over to surgical management. We switch over to which management beta? Surgical management. So, what are the indications of surgical management? If beta SCG levels are more than 5000 MIU per ml, size of ectopic more than 4 cm, or if cardiac activity is present, or if there is no response to medical management, or if there is no response to medical management. Come on, a small, a small rapid fire round. Thoda tha khelte beta. Let's play. Let's play. Let's play. Thoda tha khelte. Let's play. Come on, a small rapid fire. Yeah, tell me, what is the most common site of ectopic? I'm looking at your comments. What is the most common site of ectopic pregnancy? One minute play, one minute game. Most common site of ectopic pregnancy. Come on, come on, come on. Ampulla of fallopian tube. Done. Second MCQ beta. Second chocolate question. Second chocolate question. What is the earliest site of ecto rupture of ectopic? If ectopic develops in which part of fallopian tube, it will rupture earliest. Earliest. Come on, come on, come on, rupture, rupture, ampulla done, beta, ampulla done, ampulla most common site of ectopic. If ectopic occurs in which part of fallopian tube, tube will rupture earliest. Ah, 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 ah. Isthmus, isthmus, isthmus. Tell me, third MCQ, in isthmus, if ectopic pregnancy occurs in isthmus of fallopian tube, tube will rupture at what time? Earliest by what time? Six weeks. Isthmus, six weeks. Last site of rupture. Last site of rupture. Come on, thoda tha khilte. Let's play. Last site of rupture of tube. If ectopic develops in which part of fallopian tube, tube will rupture last. Come on, come on, come on. Interstitium. Tell me, tell me. In interstitium, tube will rupture. Tube will rupture at how many weeks? Kitna chal jayegi, yaar? 
कितना लंबा खींचेगी ट्वेल्व वी ट्वेल्व वी सो ट्यूब विल रप्चर इस इस प्रेगनेंसी अकर्स इन स्टमस बाय सिक्स वीक्स इन इंटरस्टिशियम बाय ट्वेल्व वीक्स इन एम्पुला बाय एट वीक्स सो मोस्ट कॉमन साइट ऑफ एक्टोपिक चॉकलेट क्वेश्चन एम्पुला अर्लीस्ट साइट ऑफ रप्चर ऑफ एक्टोपिक प्रेगनेंसी स्टमस लास्ट साइट ऑफ रप्चर ऑफ एक्टोपिक प्रेगनेंसी इंटरस्टिशियम दे आर फ्यू फ्यू चॉकलेट क्वेश्चन वेरी वेरी सिंपल चॉकलेट questions of ectopic pregnancy three more questions i am giving you from ectopic which i am expecting out of these three i am expecting one i am just expecting it doesn't mean that whatever i am saying that will be asked in examination it is the experience of last 15 to 16 years what we have been going through the papers of fmg exam neat pg exam aims which is the nict now so i am expecting one out of these three study ford criteria spgel burke criteria Rubin or Palmen criteria. So, study for criteria is for what? Study for criteria is for primary abdominal pregnancy. Spiegelberg criteria is for primary ovarian pregnancy. Rubin criteria or Palmen criteria is for primary cervical pregnancy. So, answer to our question, first question is intramuscular methotrexate injection. That's the answer. Tell me about fourth option, linear salpingostomy. When linear salpingostomy is done, linear salpingostomy is done. It is a surgical management, and surgical management it is done via laparoscopy. And in ectopic pregnancy, laparoscopy is done for unruptured ectopic or for ruptured ectopic. Tell me. Tell me, laparoscopy will be done if it is a case of unruptured or ruptured ectopic. Unruptured ectopic. If it is a case of ruptured ectopic, we will do a open laparotomy. Unruptured ectopic, laparoscopy, linear salpingostomy. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy, laparotomy, salpingectomy. Expectant management if beta hCG levels are less than 1000 mIU per mL. Medical management: If beta hCG levels are between 1,000 and 5,000 mIU per mL, size of ectopic mass less than 4 cm, cardiac activity is absent. Done, 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 done. Now, just few words. This is the time because we are just 16 days before our exam. Exam is on 12th December, so this is the time to converge your preparation, acclimatize yourself according to exam day. Now, what I am going to advise here. that develop a routine and acclimatize your daily routine according to exam day you are having a exam on first paper between 9 am to 11:30 am second paper between 2 pm to 4:30 pm so i would advise you to sit properly at your home sit properly at your home and properly on a study table wear proper dress wear shoes and try to study on a study table only as if you are sitting in examination hall wearing proper shoes beta proper dress everything have a feel of examination hall between 9 to 11:30 and 2 to 4:30 and try to do maximum mcqs during that time as much mcqs as you can do during this time particularly fine and regarding sleep i am receiving many 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 queries from students some students are saying we are not able to sleep properly we are not able to sleep so 5 to 6 hours sleep is enough 5 to 6 hours sleep is enough and have nutritious diet of course including few almonds walnuts and fruits and please 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 if uh, uh, i i don't want to change any of the habits just a simple advice is smoking and alcohol impair memory if at all someone is taking try to have it as less as possible question number 2 an overweight woman of 32 years an overweight woman so she is overweight first clue beta is she is overweight her age is 32 years presented to gynec clinic with complaints of hirsutism so her age is 32 we have to see how much is her age we have to see what is the build whether she is obese or thin in gynee if she is obese we can think that she may be having excessive estrogen she gives history of oligomenorrhea and ultrasound shows numerous follicles okay fine approx 14 to 15 small follicles in left ovary okay ji 
measuring in the range of 3 to 8 mm. So examiner has given us size of follicles that is ranging between 3 to 8 mm. Examiner has given us number of follicles that is approximately 14 to 15. What would be best management for her? So what comes to your mind, beta, after reading this question? This is a classical case of polycystic ovarian syndrome because in PCOS, size of follicle has to be between 2 to 9 millimeter and number of follicles should be at least 12. And complaints, oligomenorrhea that coincides with PCOS, hirsutism that coincides with PCOS. So this lady of 32 years and she is obese too. She is a case of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now examiner is just asking us what is the management. What is coming to your mind beta? What do you think about bromocryptin? What is, can anyone tell me about bromocryptin? Anything about bromocryptin? Should bromocryptin be given to her? What is coming to your mind beta? Can we give bromocryptin to her? Bromocryptin is given when? If examiner might have written at least one word about prolactin. If at least one clue about prolactin was given in this question, then we could easily use bromocryptin. But nowhere examiner has written that she is a case of hyperprolactinemia or her prolactin levels are high. So no. Bromocryptin is ruled out. Fine. No, 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 no. Very nice. Very nice. Maza agya. Wow, wow. Second option, beta. Let's think about second option. Ethinyl estradiol plus levonorgestrol. Uh, everyone knows that drug of choice for hirsutism or drug of choice for androgenic features in polycystic ovarian syndrome are oral combined pill. Bacha bacha janta hai. Drug of choice for hirsutism in PCOS, OCP. Drug of choice for acne in PCOS, OCP. Drug of choice for androgenic alopecia in PCOS, OCP. Bacha bacha janta hai. Everyone knows. So, ethinyl estradiol in levonorgestrel combination is OCP. What comes to your mind? Come on. Can, can this OCP be given? Ethinyl estradiol plus levonorgestrel. Can it be given? No, 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 Harish, no, 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 Letrozole, no way. Harish, no, Letrozole, no way. Letrozole is the answer to which question? Come on, Harish has written Letrozole. Letrozole is the answer to which question? Letrozole is the answer to the question, drug of choice for, drug of choice for infertility due to PCOS. Answer is Letrozole. Drug of choice due to, drug of choice for infertility due to PCOS. Answer is Letrozole. So, Harish, I hope you are clear now. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone is saying no. No. But can you tell me why no? Everyone is saying no. But she very smart. I'm so happy to see this. No, no, no. Uh, see. No, 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 no. See, the answer is, the answer is, beta, levonorgestrel has androgenic side effect. Levonorgestrel has androgenic side effect. And already she is having hirsutism. And we know very well, mere pyare pyare bachche jante hai, that if we are treating hirsutism due to PCOS, drug of choice is OCP, but everyone knows which generation progesterone should be used in OCP. Which generation progesterone should be used in OCP to treat hirsutism? Come on, come on, fourth generation is ideal. Fourth generation is ideal and the answer is cyproterone acetate. So which OCP will be given to treat hirsutism due to PCOS here? Examiner has beautifully tried to trap you with ethinyl estradiol and levonorgestrel combination, but fourth generation progesterone, they are anti-androgenic. Fourth generation progesterone, they are anti-androgenic. So which generation progesterone will be used to treat hirsutism due to this PCOS? Answer is ethinyl estradiol plus cyproterone acetate. Fourth generation, very nice. Kiran fourth, Reza fourth, Ritz fourth, Monica third. Four, Monica fourth is better than third. Kamlesh, four, ah, Kamlesh has written beautifully. Fourth is better than three. Era four. Rappa, Navya, Manoj, very nice, very nice. Shweta, Cyproterone, so happy, so happy. Medroxy, Progesterone, no way. So the correct answer, beta. Now, what is our take-home message with this question, beta? We are not only solving 25 questions. We are covering right, left. We are covering adjoining areas. So if examiner deviates, although I am expecting this question, it doesn't mean that it will be asked. I am expecting. So take-home message, beta. Drug of choice to treat hirsutism or acne. 
और एंड्रोजेनिक एलोपेशिया ड्यू टू पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवेरियन सिंड्रोम ओसीपी सेकंड एमसीक्यू बेटा विच जनरेशन प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन शुड बी यूज्ड इन दिस ओसीपी व्हिच इज यूज्ड टू ट्रीट हिसोटिडम ड्यू टू पीसीओएस आंसर इज फोर्थ जनरेशन फाइन बेटा नाउ फ्यू फ्यू रैपिड फायर थोड़ा सा खेलते हैं लेट्स प्ले फॉर 1 मिनट विद पीसीओएस पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवरी से थोड़ा सा खेलते हैं लेट्स प्ले लेट्स प्ले कम ऑन कम ऑन कम ऑन tell me what is the diagnostic criteria for polycystic ovarian syndrome come on come on come on let me see your comment diagnostic criteria for pcos diagnostic criteria rotterdam criteria which criteria rotterdam tell me e2 even ratio in pcos e2 even ratio in pcos which estrogen is increasing in polycystic ovarian syndrome whether it is estradiol or estron or estriol or estetrol estron estron is e1 नॉर्मल ई टू ईवन रेशियो बेटा नॉर्मली इन ए रिप्रोडक्टिव फीमेल विच इस्ट्रोजन इज हाई ईस्ट्राडियॉल बट इन पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवेरियन सिंड्रोम विच इस्ट्रोजन इज इंक्रीजिंग ईस्ट्रॉन नॉर्मल ईस्ट्राडियॉल ईस्ट्रॉन रेशियो टू इज टू वन नॉर्मली विच इस्ट्रोजन इज हाई ईस्ट्राडियॉल सो नॉर्मल ई टू ईवन रेशियो इज टू इज टू वन बट इन पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवेरियन सिंड्रोम द थिंग्स आर चेंजिंग Which estrogen is increasing? Estron. So the record reversal. So E2 even ratio in PCS will become one is to two. But please, 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 please read the questions very carefully. We just discussed here E2 even ratio in PCOS is one is to two. But examiner may play a quickly in examination hall, and the question may be even E2 ratio in PCOS. even e2 ratio in pcos will become 2 is to 1 so what we have to remember beta take home message from this session is which estrogen is increasing in polycystic ovarian syndrome estron otherwise normally which estrogen is high estradiol drug of choice for infertility due to pcos answer is letrozole drug of choice for hirsutism due to pcos ocp oral combined pill fine चलो जी दाउ फ्यू मोर एडवाइजेज इफ यू सी ए इमेज क्वेश्चन इन एग्जामिनेशन हॉल वेन एवर यू सी अ इमेज क्वेश्चन ऑलवेज सी ऑप्शन फर्स्ट डोंट जस्ट वेस्ट योर टाइम इन गोइंग थ्रू द होल क्वेश्चन वेन एवर देर इज ए इमेज क्वेश्चन सी द ऑप्शन फर्स्ट वॉट वुड बी द एडवांटेज बेटा नाउ यू विल बी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड बिटवीन दो फोर चॉइसेज ओनली unnecessarily you are thinking oh it can be this it can be this it can be this why 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 we have to do a cost benefit analysis no so see four options and then you will be your brain will be searching here and here between these among these four options only fine for clinical questions read last two lines first see if it is a 5 km long question if it is a 10 km long question then there is no need to read whole question read last two lines if you get a lot of clinical questions by chance even if one or two or five read last two lines first instead of going through the whole question that is going to save a lot of time fine and revise with utmost concentration in these 16 days what you, what, what is happening many students are sending me messages sir yaad nahi ho raha sir we are feeling as if uh, did we studied before kya kabhi padha tha sir aisa lag raha hai yaad hi nahi aa raha what is happening it is due to lack of concentration when you are revising the things when you are studying at home keep your mobile away keep on silent mode if you want to receive some emergency call by chance otherwise it's better to switch it off and use social media platforms like telegram and all particularly fix one particular time during the day that i will see poll questions during this time only see uh, 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 this, this is the reason why i have decided to put poll questions on telegram at 9 pm only i daily post poll questions at 9 pm there is a reason for it because i know that students have also acclimatized to me now that amit sir will post at 9 pm so if they have to see my questions they come to telegram at around 9 pm only so use social media platforms for studies uh, to see questions and updates only and not for otherwise anything third question beta a 16 year old girl presents with primary amenorrhea her secondary sexual characteristics are well developed with normal axillary and pubic hairs examination of external genitalia reveals absence of vagina ultrasonography reveals absence of uterus most likely diagnosis is let me see what comes to your mind her age is 16 years complaint is primary amenorrhea 
Secondary sexual characteristics are normal, well developed. Axillary and pubic hairs are also normal, okay. External genitalia, absence of vagina. And ultrasound, absence of uterus. See, 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 see. Mere bachche sab jante hain. Wow, I'm feeling so happy. See, then now, let's dissect the options. Let's dissect the options. Everyone says, see, uh, eh, 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 jagli, 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 jagali, jagali. I'm so sorry if I couldn't spell it properly because it's scrolling so fast. Someone wrote A. I just want to know why, why wrote A. Testicular feminization syndrome, many, 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 many are writing A. And that's, that, that's the reason, that's the trap actually. Examiner want to trap you with testicular feminization syndrome here. Yes, yes, Shavan, Shavan also A. Jaman A, don't feel shy while writing A. Yes, you are thinking something. This is why you are writing, someone is writing A, many are writing C. See, let's dissect the options. See, because it's not sure that examiner will ask you this way only. Examiner can change the question just by changing few words. See, what is written? Uh, axillary and pubic hairs are normal. In this question only, if examiner writes there are absent axillary and pubic hair, then answer will change immediately. Then answer will become testicular feminization syndrome. So see, the concepts are very important. And idea behind this session is to give you something very, very important, which I am expecting with my experience on 12th, of December to give you those concepts which will help you to solve various questions in examination hall. See, testicular feminization syndrome, what is the testicular feminization syndrome? Let me, let, let me tell you the concept, let me tell you the concept. Answer here is mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome, that's true, that's true. mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome, what is mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome? If Mullerian agenesis is associated with renal and spinal anomaly. That is mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome, we know. And in mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome, it is a case of Mullerian agenesis. So what develops from Mullerian agenesis? Uterus, cervix, fallopian tube, and upper two-third of vagina. So they all are absent here. And ultrasound shows there is absence of uterus. Okay, fine. Absence of uterus, clearly written. So it could be due to absent Mullerian duct. In Mullerian agenesis, axillary and pubic hairs are normal. In females, beta, tell me, can you tell me? In females, development of axillary and pubic hairs depend on what? Depend on what? Tell me, tell me. Why in Mullerian agenesis, axillary and pubic hairs are normal? What is coming to your mind? Development of axillary and pubic hairs in females depend on androgens. It depend on androgens. So androgens are normal. If Mullerian duct is absent, it has nothing to do with androgens. So androgens are normal, so axillary and pubic hairs are normal, fine. Secondary sexual characteristics, secondary sexual characteristics in female, they depend on what? They depend on estrogen and estrogen has nothing to do with Mullerian duct. Estrogen is secreted from ovary and ovary does not develop from Mullerian duct, ovary develops from genital ridge, ovary develops from genital ridge. So in patients of Mullerian agenesis, ovary is normal which is secreting normal estrogen. This is why there is normal breast development, means secondary sexual characteristics are normal. So Mullerian agenesis, secondary sexual characteristics normal because ovary is normal, because ovary develops from genital ridge. Done, 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 done. Axillary and pubic hairs are normal because they depend on androgen and androgens are not at all related with Mullerian duct, fine. In this question only, Answer would have been testicular feminization syndrome if examiner would have given you she is having absent or scanty axillary and pubic hair. Because what is testicular feminization syndrome? What is testicular feminization syndrome? Can anyone tell me? Testicular feminization syndrome, what is abnormal in testicular feminization syndrome? Tell me. Come on, speak out. Where is the exact pathology? The root cause of TFS. Root cause of TFS. TFS, is it a XX or XY? Testicular, so XY, gonad is testis, testis is normal in TFS and testis is secreting leading cells in testing, they are secreting testosterone. But the problem lies at what level? Very good, very good. Jairaj, Jairaj, proud of you. Testosterone receptor are abnormal, abnormal, fine. Testosterone receptor are abnormal. This is why testosterone is not functioning. This is why axillary and pubic hairs are absent in TFS. Fine. So TFS can't be the answer. Swear syndrome. 
What is Swear syndrome? XX or XY? Swear is Swear is XX or XY? Come on, Swear is XX or XY? Swear is again XY. Uh, what is the difference between TFS and Swear? What is the difference between testicular feminization syndrome and Swear syndrome? In testicular feminization syndrome, testis is normal. Testis is normal. But in Swear syndrome, Swear syndrome, testis itself is abnormal. Testis is dysgenetic. This is why Sertoli cells are not secreting mullerian inhibiting factor. Leydig cells are not secreting testosterone. Very nice. So what will happen to secondary sexual character? They are absent in swear. And here in this question, normal secondary sexual characteristics are given. In swear syndrome, secondary sexual characters are absent. So swear is gone. Swear is gone because secondary sexual characters are normal in this question. Testicular feminization syndrome is gone because normal axillary and pubic hairs are given in this question. Now, let's dissect this fourth option. Craniopharyngioma. Craniopharyngioma is a pituitary tumor which will secrete prolactin. If answer is craniopharyngioma, at least one word would have been written in this question. Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me, beta, what word should have been written? What clue were you expecting if you had to choose the choice craniopharyngioma? Very good. Priya, prolactin, very nice. Very nice, very nice. So examiner should have written, she is having hyperprolactinemia, pituitary or galactoria. Very nice. If it was craniopharyngioma, what would have been written in this question? Craniopharyngioma, pituitary tumor. So, if a patient presents with, let's play, thoda sa khelte hai. Let's play, let's play. If craniopharyngioma was option, what examiner would have given? A patient presents with primary aminoria and galactoria, what is most likely? Craniopharyngioma. Second, a patient presents with primary aminoria and bitemporal hemianopia. Why bitemporal hemianopia occurs in craniopharyngioma? Because craniopharyngioma is a pituitary tumor. And what is the anatomical location of pituitary? It is situated superior to optic chiasma. So if there is a pituitary tumor, it's going to compress optic chiasma. And what happens at optic chiasma? Crossing over of fibers, which lead to which visual manifestation? Bitemporal hemianopia. So primary aminoria with bitemporal hemianopia. What is most likely? Craniopharyngioma. Primary aminoria with headache, what is most likely? Craniopharyngioma. Primary aminoria with galactoria, what is most likely? What is most likely? Craniopharyngioma. Primary aminoria with absent axillary pubic hairs, what is most likely? Testicular feminization syndrome. Another MCQ. Primary aminoria with bilateral inguinal hernia. Primary aminoria with bilateral inguinal hernia. What is most likely? This bilateral inguinal hernia is nothing. It is not a true hernia. They are undescended testis. In testicular feminization syndrome, testis are undescended, which are present in inguinal canal. And they mimic hernia. Because of this bulge, they mimic hernia. So if a patient presents with primary aminoria and bilateral inguinal hernia, what is most likely? Testicular feminization syndrome. So this is how, beta, we get clue with every option. Fine. Manish TFS, basic TFS, Nali undescended testis, Nikhil, Shrabani, Sheikh Basi, TFS, good, 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 good. But answer to this question because axillary and pubic hairs are normal. Shivam TFS, Rocky TFS, yes, 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 good. So answer here is Mayer Rokitansky Custer Heather syndrome. Very nice. Again, just few lines. What we have to do? Because many students are saying, Sir, we are not able to memorize. Sir, revise bhi kar rahe revision bhi karte hain, fir bhi yaad nahi rahta kai baar. We are revising, still we are not able to memorize. Whatever tips I am giving, this is nothing YouTube-ish material, nothing YouTube-ish. This is my personal thought, which, which is my experience, and which I think should be very fruitful to you. What you do, beta, you are revising whole day. Suppose you have done a 10 hours revision in the day, you have done a 12 hours revision in the day. And if you want to make highly constructive use of this 10 to 12 hours revision, you just devote one, one hour, one hour beta, one hour, even one hour is enough. Just re-revise the thing. 
वॉट एवर यू हैव सपोज यू स्टार्टेड योर रिविजन यू वोक अप एट एट ओ क्लॉक इन द मॉर्निंग सो फ्रॉम एट ओ क्लॉक इन द मॉर्निंग सपोज यू हैव रिवाइज द स्टफ टिल नाइन पी एम और टेन पी एम इट्स नॉट लाइक दिस दैट यू आर रिवाइजिंग कंटिन्यूसली वी ऑल आर ह्यूमन बींग्स वी अंडरस्टैंड एवरी थिंग देर आर ब्रेक्स इन बिटवीन विच आर नेचुरल ब्रेक विच आर रिक्वायर्ड अदरवाइज हाउ विल यू रिटर्न द थिंग बट वेन यू वॉन्ट टू स्लीप सपोज यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू बैग एट अराउंड इलेवन ओके सो जस्ट यूटिलाइज वन आवर बिफोर स्लीपिंग इन जस्ट ब्रशिंग अप इन जस्ट ब्रशिंग अप द थिंग्स विच यू रिवाइज ड्यूरिंग द डे जस्ट सी इट फॉर थ्री और फोर डेज इट्स गोइंग टू मेक ए लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस दैट वन आवर बिफोर स्लीपिंग इफ यू आर जस्ट ब्रशिंग अप द थिंग वॉट हैपन्स बेटा वी रिवाइज द थिंग्स थ्रू आउट द डे एंड बिफोर स्लीपिंग देन वी टेक सम अदर सब्जेक्ट which we didn't study on that day that's the biggest mistake one hour before sleeping what should be done we should go through once again just scroll the pages quickly just scroll the pages quickly of whatever we have studied during the day that's all re revise the things one thing and create a 16 lane golden highway for beautiful recall in examination hall so how 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 to create the highway that we have been doing for last many months just increase your concentration and whenever you are stuck in examination hall just think only one thing if you are stuck at a point if you are stuck at a point suppose examiner has given you a googly ball venetian blind ultrasound appearance venetian blind appearance in ultrasound is seen in which disease i am talking about gynae venetian blind can anyone write venetian blind appearance in ultrasound is seen in which disease suppose this is a question and you are stuck in examination hall oh amit sir told venetian blind appearance oh am venetian blind appearance amit sir showed the image also amit sir showed us the ultrasound also what is venetian blind appearance venetian blind appearance where where, where was it i am stuck then just cool down cool down and just try to recall the word venetian blind venetian blind when amit sir told us venetian blind appearance amit sir taught us amit sir told us it's like a blind on the window oh what was that topic what was that topic where was i sitting at that time i was wearing which clothes at that time so these are the anchors beta these are the supporting anchors try to use these try to connect the dots try to connect oh i was there i was i was sitting i was sitting on bed i think and i was wearing that green shirt venetian blind oh amit sir was teaching adenomyosis amit sir was teaching adenomyosis this is how beta become childish be childish kisse darna yaar kisse sharam karni whom you are afraid of why, why do you feel shame kisse darna kiski sharam bindas zindagi jiyo yaar oh amit sir was teaching adenomyosis ठीक है बिल्कुल वहां से उठा तो बच्चे की तरह से पकड़ो बच्चे की बच्चे पकड़ते ना जस्ट बिकम ए चाइल्ड फाइन एडी नो माई असर सो क्रिएट अ सिक्सटीन लेन गोल्डन हाईवे एंड दिस इज माय एक्सपीरियंस फॉर फाइव टू टेन मिनट्स इन अ डे टेक योर अवेयरनेस टू योर ब्रीदिंग आई हैव टॉट इन माई क्लासेज मैनी स्टूडेंट्स आर बेनिफिटेड लाइक एनी थिंग आई विल जस्ट टेल यू इन थर्टी सेकेंड वॉट यू हैव टू डू जस्ट क्लोज योर आईज and take your awareness to your breathing just see here what's happening inspiration expiration i am not teaching you physiology or pharmacology or pathology just try to have a look where the breath is going inside and it's coming inside whenever you are feeling low whenever you are stuck i am just telling you the first step the first step of a long journey first step of a long journey just try to bring your awareness to your breathing just try to have a look at your inspiration and expiration and you will feel you will feel so energetic your concentration is going to improve like anything this is just a first step just do it for 16 days just 2 minutes in a day 2 minutes in a day next question beta next question partial fusion of mullerian ducts will result in partial fusion so uh, can anyone tell me the answer partial fusion of mullerian ducts will result in tell me partial fusion of mullerian ducts will result in yeah yeah c b c partial fusion of mullerian ducts will result in c c c c many c few a few b praveen b 
बाइकॉर्नोइड 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 हरीश ए राम बी सी 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 पार्शियल फ्यूजन ऑफ मलेरियन डक्स विल रिजल्ट इन सी आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन शुड बी बिफोर बिफोर जस्ट मार्किंग द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन थोड़ा सा खेलते हैं लेट्स प्ले लेट्स प्ले थोड़ा सा खेलते हैं लेट्स प्ले लेट लेट्स प्ले सी हाउ दिस कंजनेटल मालफॉर्म जस्ट जस्ट लुक एट मी वेरी केयरफुली जस्ट लुक एट मी वेरी केयरफुली वी विल प्ले फॉर टू मिनट्स ओके कंजनेटल मालफॉर्मेशन ऑफ यूट्रस हाउ दे अकर सी नॉर्मली अ नॉर्मल यूट्रस इज फॉर्म वेन टू मोलेरियन डट्स फ्यूज टूगेदर डन 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 देन वॉट हैपन्स वाई एबनॉर्मलिटी इज डेवलप एबनॉर्मलिटी नंबर वन If Mullerian ducts don't fuse at all, if they don't fuse at all, they remain separate. What is the outcome? What is the outcome? Can anyone? Can anyone? If Mullerian ducts don't fuse at all, they remain separate. What is the outcome? Outcome is outcome is uterine didelphis, double uterus, double. If Mullerian ducts don't fuse at all, they remain separate. What is the outcome? Uterine didelphis. Very nice. Second MCQ. If Mullerian ducts fuse partially. Everyone knows, beta. Everyone knows how fusion of Mullerian duct occurs. In which fashion? Above downwards or below downwards? Mullerian ducts embryologically. That's the embryology topic. Mullerian ducts develop in which fashion? Above below or below upwards? They develop in which fashion? Above below. Second MCQ. Mullerian ducts fuse in which fashion? Below upwards or above below? Below upwards. So tell me just one thing. If Mullerian ducts fuse in below upwards fashion? If they fuse in below of parts fashion, which part of Mullerian duct will fuse first, lower or upper? If they fuse in which fashion, they fuse in this fashion, beta, this fashion, below of part. So which part of Mullerian duct will fuse first, lower part? And our question is, if Mullerian duct fuse partially, question is if Mullerian duct fuse partially, it automatically says. That Mullerian ducts have fused in which part, lower or upper? Lower, because they fuse in which fashion, below or upward. So if they have fused in below part, lower part, what is the outcome? Lower part is fused and upper part is separate, bicornuate. So the outcome is bicornuate uterus. Third question, beta. If embryologically only one Mullerian duct develops, I will show you the images. I will show you the images. If only one Mullerian duct develops, what is the outcome? Unicornuate uterus. If Mullerian ducts fuse, if Mullerian ducts fuse, but their inner walls don't disappear. Mullerian ducts fuse. Uterus ban gaya. Uterus has developed, but their inner walls don't disappear. These walls, inner wall, they are persisting. Then what is the outcome? Septate uterus. Outcome is septate uterus. Another MCQ. If Mullerian ducts fuse. But their inner walls disappear partially. Again, beta, my बच्चे जानते हैं. My students know disappearance of inner walls of Mullerian duct is also in below upwards fashion. So, which part of inner walls disappear first? Lower part. And the question is, if inner walls of Mullerian duct disappear partially. means they are disappearing first in lower part or upper part lower part so which will be persisting upper part first question answer is subseptate uterus partial septum another question beta in subseptate uterus septum is present in which part of uterus upper part of uterus or lower part of uterus upper part of uterus because it has disappeared in which part of uterus it has disappeared in lower part of uterus let us see few images have a look here i'll show you this these are hysterosalpingography image this is a normal hysterosalpingography as you can see this is a normal hsc image let me What is this? Can anyone tell me? What is this? Can anyone tell me? This is the HSG image. This is a hysterosalpingography image. HSG. HSG hysterosalpingography. We install radio opaque dye and then we take X-ray films. Then we take X-ray films. 
So what is this? Please answer. What is this congenital malformation of uterus? What is this abnormality? Very nice. Didelphys. Everyone writes didelphys. No, 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 khatri. It's not bicornuate. It's not bicornuate, beta. It's didelphys. I will show you the difference. I am expecting a question between didelphys and bicornuate on 12th of December. I am expecting a question. This is very good, very good khatri, leech Wilkinson cannula. But khatri, can you see how many leech Wilkinson cannula are there? This is the one, this is the two. So two leech Wilkinson cannula were required. Can anyone tell me why two leech Wilkinson cannula were required? Can anyone tell me, beta, why two leech Wilkinson cannula were required? This is didelphys. But there was clinical suspicion of didelphys. This is why two cannula were used. Because there are two, two, there are two, two. What to two? There are two, two. What to two? Yeah, what to two? Why, leech, why two leech Wilkinson cannula were required? What was the reason? There were two. I am waiting. I am waiting. Ambarnath, no, no. Two cervix, two cervix, two cervix. So leech Wilkinson cannula, two vagina. Two vagina. Rocky, Rocky, you rock. Rocky, you rock. Chocolate. Please text me. Please text me after the class. We will meet and I will give you chocolate. My phone number 704210992. You deserve a chocolate. 704210992. Rocky chocolate. Two chocolates for you. Rocky, two chocolates for you. So, what, what we, we can see, this is a HSG film and there are two Leach Wilkinson cannula. Why two Leach Wilkinson cannula were required, beta? Because we were suspecting two vagina. This is the only congenital malformation of uterus, important and potential MCQ zone, where there are two vagina. Where there are two vagina. Because of this. <laughs> good, good, good. Chalo ji. Now, this was about uterine didelphys. Now, another image. Tell me, what is that? I am showing you one more. Tell me, what is this? Tell me, what is this? Come on, everyone, come on. What is this? What is this? Bicornuate. This is bicornuate. Can you see, beta? We, we discussed, hum thoda tha khele the na abhi. we played for some time. Uh, Malarian ducts fused partially and they fuse in which fashion? Below upwards fashion. So which part has been fused? You can see lower part is one, one, one. Upper part are separate because they could not be fused. So this is the case of bicornuate uterus. Bicornuate. Bicornuate is of two variety beta. Unicolis and bicolis. Tell me which one is more common. Important question. Which bicornuate uterus is more common? Unicolis or bicolis? This is bicornuate because lower part is fused. Lower part is fused, so this is bicornuate. Tell me which bicornuate is more common, unicolis or bicolis? Unicolis or bicolis? Unicolis is more common. Which one is more common, beta? Unicolis is more common. Thoda sa aur khelte hain. Let's play. Let's play. Thoda sa aur, thoda sa aur, thoda sa aur. Tell me, ye kya hai? Ye kya hai? Ay, ay. <laughs> Unicolis is more common. Very good. Tell me, ye kya hai? Ye kya hai? <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Very nice. This is, this is, this is, this is uni, 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 uni. This is uni. So, this is a case of unicornuate uterus. Why this is unicornuate uterus? If only one Mullerian duct develops, outcome is unicornuate uterus, and this is only one, this is only one. Dusri side to supra saaf. Nothing is present on other side. There is only one Mullerian duct which has resulted in formation of just 50% part of uterus on the side of Mullerian duct. So, this is the case of unicornuate uterus. Let's play. Let's play. Uh, tell me. How many fallopian tubes should be present in unicornuate uterus? How many fallopian tubes should be present in unicornuate uterus? Let's play. Let's play. Thoda sa aur, thoda sa aur. How many fallopian tubes are present in unicornuate uterus? Banana shaped uterus. Mahindra Singh, chocolates for you. Mahindra Singh, chocolates for you. Choc text me after the class. Chocolates for you. Very good. 
हाउ मेनी फेलोपियन ट्यूब्स वन धन 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 वन वन फेलोपियन ट्यूब विद यूनिकॉर्नल ट्यूटर बिकॉज 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 फेलोपियन ट्यूब ऑल्सो डेवलप्स फ्रॉम मुलेरियन डक एंड हाउ मेनी मुलेरियन डक्स आर प्रेजेंट हियर जस्ट वन बिकॉज देर इज ओनली वन मुलेरियन डक सो देर इज ओनली वन फेलोपियन ट्यूब सो देर इज ओनली वन फेलोपियन ट्यूब वेरी नाइस सो टू वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बेटा टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बेटा आई एम अगेन रिपीटिंग अगेन रिपीटिंग टू वेजाइना आर सीन इन विच कंजेनाइटल माल फॉर्मेशन ऑफ यूटेर यूटेराइन टाइडल What's another name of uterine didelphis, beta? Double utera. Another name of uterine didelphis is double utera. Another name of unicornate uterus is banana-shaped uterus or penis-shaped uterus. Unicornate uterus is also called banana-shaped uterus or penis-shaped uterus. So, if only one Mullerian duct develops, outcome is unicornate or penis-shaped or banana-shaped uterus. If Mullerian ducts don't fuse at all, uterine didelphis. If Mullerian ducts fuse partially, by चॉकलेट का काम ही खत्म कर दिया मैंने खुद ही डायग्नोसिस बता दिया एनी anyway, पक गए होंगे बोले सर तो एक चॉकलेट के लिए इतना पका रहे इतना दिमाग कौन खाली पीली खराब करेगा एक चॉकलेट के लिए वो भी हाँ जैसे सेप्टेट यूटर can you see beta central filling defect this is the central filling defect due to septum there is a septum in between this is why nothing is filled in between so this is a case of septate uter this is a case of septate uter this is septate fine now fine let me show you few hysteroscopy images because images are frequently asked in congenital malformations of uter This image is a very important hysteroscopy image, which is frequently asked in NEET PG and INI CET. This is they have asked this question at least seven to eight times in NEET PG and INI CET. This is hysteroscopy image, beta. We are doing a hysteroscopy, and this is bicornuate uterus. Which one it is? Sorry, this is a, a laparoscopy image. This is a bicornuate uterus. Which one? Bicornuate. This is a bicornuate. Uterus. This is a bicornuate. Let me, let me do other color. This is a bicornuate uterus. This is bicornuate. This is laparoscopy image of bicornuate uterus. Fine. They were HSG images. This is laparoscopy. Okay. Let's move to another question. A lady presented with greenish yellow vaginal discharge so what examiner want to tell us a lady presented with greenish yellow vaginal discharge okay and itching so what are the complaints beta what are the complaints in this question nature of discharge is greenish yellow and the second complaint is itching so greenish yellow vaginal discharge and itching what would be drug of choice for her so to choose drug of choice first of all we should know what is this problem So this is a chocolate question, but in fact, this is a chocolate question. But can you believe one thing? Can you believe this question was asked in INI CET November twenty. This question, this is a chocolate question. Bacha bacha janta. This question was asked in INI CET November twenty twenty one. November twenty twenty one. A lady presented with greenish yellow vagina discharge. The only difference is I have made this question little simpler. In INI CT November 21, they were asking about dirty grayish white discharge. And dirty grayish white discharge we have clearly written in our notes. It is seen in bacterial vaginosis. The, I have made it little simpler. It is greenish yellow vaginal discharge. So greenish trichomoniasis. Very nice. Kedia trichomoniasis, Obi trichomoniasis, Rithika trico. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow. Metronidazole, Mamun, very nice, very nice, very nice. Colpitis macularis, Tayyab, very good. Akansha bacterial vaginosis. Akansha, you are giving answer of that question, which was asked in INICT now, uh, 21 November. That was about dirty grayish white discharge. So dirty grayish white discharge is seen in bacterial vaginosis. Trichomonas, it is greenish yellow or greenish white discharge, and itching is present. Fine. So what is the treatment for trichomoniasis? Metronidazole. 
That's for sure. That's for sure. So let's choose this answer. This is metro and other. That's for sure. Can you tell me one thing better? Like, let's dissect. Thoda sa khelte. Let's play. Metro and other is the answer. If examiner is framing the same question as it was given in INICT in November 21 only, recently this month only, uh, can you tell me if in question it was written dirty grayish white discharge? Of course, in bacterial vaginosis, itching is not there. Itching is not there. Then what would be the answer? Again, the answer would be metronidazole. You are very lucky, even in INICT, they didn't ask the door. But can anyone tell me, treatment of trichomonal vaginitis is also metronidazole. Treatment of bacterial vaginosis is also metronidazole. Had it been a dirty grayish white discharge, then answer would have been metronidazole only. Fine. And this is a trichomonal vaginitis, so answer is again metronidazole. Can anyone tell me what I am going to ask you now? What is the dose of metronidazole to treat trichomonal vaginitis? And what is the dose of metronidazole to treat bacterial vaginosis? What's the difference? What's the same, same, same? Uh, yes, Sony, same, same. Metro, metro, beta, you are right, you are right. Dose, Kush, 500, Swati Singh, 2 gram, Pragati, metronidazole, Vatsala, Metro, Rohan, 2 gram. Yes, all of these children are mine. Kamini, 2 gram. Don 500 milligram, Praveen, Fulka, Joya 400. Oh, then, oh, 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 bhai, YouTube bhi aagya, PG kar raha hai Good, 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 good. Naam nahi loonga. Chalo, thik hai. Very nice. So, dose of metronidazole to treat trichomonal vaginitis is 2 gram single dose. And dose of metronidazole to treat bacterial vaginosis is 500 milligram. TDS for 7 days. And what is the treatment protocol in pregnancy? In first trimester, we don't give any treatment. In second and third trimester, 250 milligram TDS for 7 days. That's for trichomonal vaginitis as well as for bacterial vaginosis. Chalo ji to metronidazole ka kaam to khatam hoa. Let's get rid of metronidazole now. Metronidazole is the answer to two questions. Whether it is a dirty grayish white vaginal discharge or it is a greenish white or greenish yellow vaginal discharge, done, 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 done. Let's come to doxycycline. When doxycycline could be the answer? What should have been written in the question so that we were choosing doxycycline? Can anyone answer? Let's dissect the option. Thoda sa khelte hai. Let's play. Doxycycline, doxycycline. When doxycycline could be the answer? When? When? When doxycycline could be the answer? Can anyone? Doxycycline, we have written clearly in our notes. Bacha, bacha, janta. Clemidia. Adya, clemidia. Sheta, clemidia. Tualipalli, clemidia. Very nice, very nice. So, treatment for clemidia is doxycycline. Or if doxycycline is not given in option, tell me. If doxycycline is not given in option and you are treating clemidial vaginitis, Azithromycin, azithromycin. So, if doxycycline is not given in option, then answer would be azithromycin. Fine, fine, fine. That is for chlamydial vaginitis. Tell me one thing. Fluconazole could be the answer. For which question? To choose fluconazole, what should have been written in the question? Kya hona chahiye tha, yaar? Question ke andar to hum fluconazole ko pakal lete. Fluconazole, fluconazole, fluconazole kab choose karte hain? When we were choosing fluconazole. When, 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 fluconazole, very good candida, candida. For candidal infection, answer would have been fluconazole. So here it is metronidazole. Now, thoda sa khel te. Let's play for two minutes. Do minute khel te. Two minutes. Chalo. Chocolate questions rapid fire. Chocolate questions rapid fire. Greenish yellow or greenish white vaginal discharge. Greenish yellow or greenish white Vaginal discharge, greenish yellow or greenish white vaginal discharge. Greenish yellow or greenish white vaginal discharge is seen in trichomonal vaginitis. It is seen in trichomonal vaginitis. Chalo ji, curdy white or cottage cheese like discharge. Curdy white or cottage cheese like discharge is seen in curdy white or. Yar zara mic lag raha hai na to camera ban kar diya. Hello, yeah. Curdy white or cottage cheese like discharge. मुझे तो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता इन्होंने आके कैमरा बंद कर दिया कि सर अच्छा नहीं लगेगा यार क्या अच्छा बुरा यार सब ठीक है माइक ही तो लगा रहे चलो curdy white और cottage cheese like discharge is seen in come on 
Candida. Very good. Very good. Very good. Treatment of male partner trichomonal. Done or not done? Treatment of male partner trichomonal vaginitis. Done or not done? Done, 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 done. Why? Because it is a sexually transmitted infection. Treatment of male partner if it is a candidal infection. Come on. Treatment of male partner if it is a candidal infection. It is done only if male is symptomatic. Because it is not routinely transmitted sexually. Gold standard is treatment beta. Candida is not routinely transmitted sexually. So in candidal vaginitis, treatment of male partner is done only if male is symptomatic. Trichomonal vaginitis, important questions beta, important. For trichomonal vaginitis, treatment of male partner is always done. For chlamydial vaginitis, we are even searching for male partner because it is very deadly sexually transmitted disease. So for treatment of chlamydial vaginitis, it is azithromycin or doxycycline plus contact tracing. So don't just jump to the option A or B, just seeing the azithromycin or doxycycline, we will jump and pick up. No, read the options till last word in all the questions because you never know. Option D may be a much, much better option than option A or B and you just picked up option A or B. So option D might be azithromycin plus contact tracing and option A was azithromycin or hum lut gaye option A mein. So just read all options till last word. So azithromycin plus contact tracing. Bacterial vaginosis, treatment of male partner is not required. Treatment of male partner is not required in bacterial vaginosis. Fine, not sexually transmitted. Itching is absent in bacterial vaginosis. Itching is absent in bacterial vaginosis. Another chocolate question, beta. Maximum itching is seen in which vaginitis? Maximum itching is seen in which vaginitis? Intense itching. Clearly written in notes. Intense itching. Intense itching is seen in candidal vaginitis. Which vaginitis? Candidal vaginitis. Fine. Let's come back to our questions. So answer to this question is metronida doll. Come on. Let me show you a few images of vaginitis. They are also asked in exam. Let me show you. Tell me, what is this? Tell me, what is this? This is which vaginitis? Which vaginitis? Please, can anyone answer? Which vaginitis is this? Can you make out what is this? What is this? What are these? 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 These are tiny numerous ulcerations on vagina. Tiny numerous ulcerations on vagina. Trico, strawberry. Wow! Trico. So this is called strawberry vagina. Why it is called strawberry vagina, beta? Important chocolate question. Strawberry vagina because of development of tiny numerous ulcers on vagina. So one name is strawberry vagina. What is the second name? Angry looking vagina. What is the third name? Colpitis macularis. So strawberry vagina is seen in trichomonal vaginitis. Angry looking vagina is seen in trichomonal vaginitis. Colpitis macularis is seen in trichomonal vaginitis. So answer to three, three, three chocolate questions is trichomonal vaginitis. Trico, trico, gopi, trico. Askar, Trico, very nice. Hari Kishan, angry looking. You are, why you are looking angry? Yaar? Karthik, strawberry, very nice. Kuldeep, colpitis, col not colitis. This is not colitis, yaar. this is colpitis maculatis. Chalo ji, next image. Chalo, thoda sa aur khilte. Let's play. Tell me, tell me, tell me. What is this? Tell me, what is this? Tell me, what is this image? What is this image? This is dirty grayish white discharge. This is dirty grayish white discharge. Dirty grayish white. So this dirty grayish white is seen in which condition? This is seen in bacterial vaginosis. This is seen in bacterial vaginosis. Dirty grayish white, I told you, INICT, November 21, they asked drug of choice for this discharge. They didn't give image, they just wrote dirty grayish white. So this is bacterial vaginosis beta. Let me show you one more, one more. Tell me. Oh, tell me. So this is this is something greenish yellow. Can you see better? This is greenish yellow discharge. So which vaginitis is this? 
which vaginitis is this? This is greenish yellow or greenish white discharge. Which vaginitis is this? Trichomonal vaginitis. If examiner gives you this picture and asks you what is the drug of choice for this, answer would be metronidazole. Now, the second one. Come to second image, beta. Second image. What is this? What's happening here? What is the nature of this discharge? Can you see? What's the nature of this discharge? This is curdy white, beta. Curdy white or thick cottage cheese-like discharge. This is seen in candidal vaginitis. So just by looking at these pictures, we can identify which type of vaginitis is this. Drug of choice for the first picture, greenish yellow metronidazole. Drug of choice for the second picture, that is curdy white or cottage cheese-like discharge, is fluconazole. Fluconazole. By the way, jate jate ek last ball or khelte hain. What is recurrent candidiasis? Recurrent candidiasis. If there are if four episodes in a year, if there are four or more than four episodes of candidal vaginitis in a year, that is called recurrent vulvovaginal candidiasis. Chalo ji. Khel over, came over, agla question aa gaya. Next question. All of the following are indications of IUI except. All of the following are indications of IUI. Isko charge to nahi karna, battery kam ho rahi. All of the following are indications of IUI except intrauterine insemination. So, anti sperm antibodies, tubal block, impotence, epispedias. Tell me, intrauterine insemination. All of the following are indications of IUI except. See, intrauterine insemination, we are inseminating, I will show you the image, I will show you the image, we are injecting semen in uterine cavity, B tubal block, B tubal block, Mradul A, Sheikh B, Priya B, Rocky B, Divesh B, Narendra, Arvind, Farman D, 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 why, why, why someone said D, 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 Arvind, Praveen, Manne, Manne, Swami, Saha, B. See, all of the following are indications of IUI except intrauterine insemination. So, intrauterine insemination, thoda sa khelte hai. IUI, intrauterine insemination means we are inseminating semen in uterus. This is uterus, beta. I will show you the image also. This is uterus and we are using IUI catheter and inseminating semen in uterine cavity. So, when, when do you want to inseminate? When do you want to inseminate? The one concept, beta, thoda ta khel ke batata One concept, why do you want to, why do you want to inseminate? Why do you want to put semen in uterine cavity? You want to put semen in uterine cavity, so you are inseminating in uterine cavity. Fine. So, that will be inseminated, beta. Chota sa concept hai, chota sa khel rahe That will be inseminated, no. If there is some problem here, then we are bypassing this tract. Or if there is some problem in fallopian tube, can it be of any use? Hum chhod ka rahe hai, yaar. We are inseminating in uterine cavity. So we are just bypassing this tract. So if there is a problem in fallopian tube, can this IUI be of any use? No way. No way. So IUI is not fruitful in tubal block. So what can be the problem here? Now let's think, thoda sa sochte, thoda sa khelte. What can be the problem here? Anti-sperm antibodies in cervix, yes, IUI will be done. If the male is impotent, not able to perform intercourse, IUI will be done. If female is having vaginismus, what is vaginismus? Involuntary contractions of vagina at the time of intercourse because of anxiety and apprehension, then IUI will be helpful. Epispedias, hypospedias, retrograde ejaculation, IUI will be helpful because of faulty openings, there won't be forward ejaculation. So, epispedias, hypospedias, retrograde ejaculation, IUI will be helpful. And IUI is also helpful in cases of mild oligospermia. What is mild oligospermia? If a sperm count is between 10 to 15 million per ml, chocolate question. Another chocolate question. What is moderate oligospermia? If a sperm count is between, come on, speak out. Moderate oligo. If a sperm count is between 10 to 5, 5 to 10. 5 to 10 is moderate. 10 to 15 is mild. And if a sperm count is less than 5 million per ml, this is severe oligospermia. So, IUI is helpful in cases of which oligospermia? 
माइल्ड ऑलिगोस्पर्मिया नाउ यू कैन आस्क मी अमित सर अमित सर वाई आई वाई इज हेल्पफुल इन माइल्ड ऑलिगोस्पर्मिया यू आर सेइंग इट इज यूजफुल टू बाईपास दिस ट्रैक्ट अब माइल्ड ऑलिगोस्पर्म आ गया आ गया इसमें ट्रैक्ट कहां से आ गया वेयर यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रैक सो लिसन 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 बच्चों इन केसेज ऑफ माइल्ड ऑलिगोस्पर्मिया वेयर स्पर्म काउंट इज बिटवीन टेन टू फिफ्टीन मिलियन पर एम एल वॉट हैपन्स विद आई यू आई वी आर यूजिंग वॉश सीमेन and best method for semen washing is density gradient method when we are using wash semen when we are washing semen beta it is getting concentrated this is why iui is helpful in cases of mild oligospermia also so my loving students mere pyare pyare bachcho now the concept is clear iui will be helpful to treat the cases which are involving the pathology here or to improve the concentration of semen mild so answer to this question would be tubal block in tubal block it is not useful now you tell me a chocolate question of our 12 december exam what is the best management for tubal block what should be the best management for tubal block this is uterus this is fallopian tube if tube is blocked if tube is blocked iui is not fruitful then in vitro fertilization why this is fallopian tube and this is ovary so what we do अल्ट्रासाउंड गाइडेड ऊसाइट एस्परेशन कटोरी में रखा पेट्री डिश में देन वी ड्रॉप स्पम्प अलाउ फर्टिलाइजेशन टू अकर सो आई वी एफ इज बेस्ट मैनेजमेंट फॉर वॉट ट्यूबल ब्लॉक फॉर ट्यूबल ब्लॉक वॉट इज द बेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इन विट्रो फर्टिलाइजेशन फाइन लेट्स डिस्कस तनवीर ईरा किलर दिव्या एंजल मोहित प्राउड ऑफ यू यार मजा आ गया रियली प्राउड ऑफ यू प्राउड ऑफ यू गुड गुड चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ यू डिजर्व चॉकलेट आई एम अगेन गिविंग यू माई नंबर सेवन जीरो फोर टू वन जीरो ट्रिपल नाइन टू बिंदास लिख देना यार मैसेज विल भी एक हजार से ज्यादा मैसेज होंगे मोबाइल में पढ़ते पढ़ते चार या पांच दिन लग जाएंगे इट विल टेक फोर टू फाइव डेज टू रीड ऑल द मैसेजेस बट आई विल रिवर्ट बैक टू ऑल द मैसेज and if possible we will have a chocolate party one day okay ji chalo all of the following are indications of iui except so anti sperm antibodies this is the indication yes tubal block no impotence yes epispadia yes so answer is tubal block so what is best management for tubal block in vitro fertilization that is ivf isko bhi charging mein laga lete hain chalo मैं मैं इमेज दिखा दूं लेट मी शो यू द इमेजेस लेट मी शो यू इमेज ऑफ आई यू आई फाइन जी फाइन 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 हाँ This is how intrauterine insemination is done, beta. This is how we do IUI. This is IUI cannula. This is IUI catheter, and you can see there are various chocolate questions which are asked from here. Various chocolate questions, beta. This insemination is done at which side? It is done near tubal ostia. It is done near tubal opening, so that you can see it can be directly picked up in fallopian tube. so where insemination is done it is done near tubal ostia how much semen is used 0.5 ml how much semen is used beta 0.5 ml was semen is used or unwashed semen is used was semen is used 0.5 ml was semen is used and it is inseminated near tubal ostia fine beta so this is how this iui is done fine i will show you iui catheter also iui cannula also how a iui catheter looks like have a look beta this is iui cannula this is iui cannula and we fill this semen we load semen in this iui cannula and then we inseminate it near tubal opening beta how much is used 0.5 ml important question beta was semen is used or unwashed semen is used was semen is used what is the best method for semen washing beta we just discussed important chocolate question beta best method for semen washing is density gradient method 
density gradient method. What is the best method for semen washing beta? Density gradient method. And best method for tubal block is in vitro fertilization, IVF. Chalo ji. Next question. Aag laga dena beta. Aag laga dena. In sola din mein bahut kuch ho sakta hai. In these 16 days. Although all the subjects are important, I don't want to say that this subject is not important or this subject is not important. All the subjects carry their own weight. But this is our experience of last so many years. They are giving too much emphasis on few subjects. And you know that. So be prepared. Be prepared accordingly. Shaloji. A male presents with, another question. A male presents with azoospermia. Azoospermia. This charger is in my bag. Bhi rakha hua hai. Black wale bag. Bhi. A male presents with azoospermia. On examination, size of testis is normal. Okay, ji. The question is, a male presents with azoospermia. On examination, size of testis is normal. His serum FSH and testosterone are normal. They are normal. Do-do bar normal likhne ki kya jaroot hai? normal normal Most probable causes. So a male presents with azoospermia. The problem is azoospermia. Let's see, bache kya samajre hai? Male presents with azoospermia. On examination, size of testis is normal. Okay. His serum, FSH and testosterone are normal. Most probable cause is. Wah ji wah, phir chocolate yaar, meri to khajar chocolate phir nikal gai. <laughs> एक हजार चॉकलेट फिर निकल गई <laughs> सबको पता है सब अपने ही बच्चे हैं ऐसा लग रहा है गुड 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 वास डिफरेंस ऑफ स्ट्रक्शन अ मेल प्रेजेंट्स विद एजोस्पर्मिया ऑन एग्जामिनेशन साइज ऑफ टेस्टिस ऑन एग्जामिनेशन साइज ऑफ टेस्टिस इज नॉर्मल हिज सीरम एफएसएच हिज सीरम एफएसएच एंड टेस्टोस्टेरोन आर नॉर्मल मोस्ट प्रोबेबल कॉज इज Vast difference obstruction. Charger laga lu yaar ek second mein bas. Chalo. Thik hai. Isko thoda sa aise kar lo. Phir aaram se charger idhar se aajayega. Koi problem nahi. Yes. So. Ab thoda sa khel le. Let's play. Vast difference obstruction. That's true. Problems in male are categorized in three parts. Pre-testicular, testicular and post-testicular. So pre-testicular, if there is a defect at hypothalamus or pituitary level, then it is pre-testicular. Very simple chocolate, yaar. If there is any disorder in hypothalamus, will it stimulate pituitary? No. So can FSH be normal? No. Chalo ji, gai baat. And let's think about option D, pituitary disorder. If there is a defect in pituitary, can FSH be normal? No. And our question clearly says his serum FSH is normal. So just by this word, serum FSH is normal and uh, hypothalamic disorder is gone, pituitary disorder is gone. And second clue is testosterone is also normal. So with this clue that testosterone is normal, testicular disorder is gone. If there is any testicular disorder, might be there was a motorbike accident or there was some history of radiation or some surgical removal was done or some Klinefelter syndrome or Raffenstein syndrome or there was some history of mumps in childhood which could have led to orchitis and all. So if there was any testicular problem, the testosterone should have been low. The testosterone is also normal. So testicular disorder is also gone. And now we are left with only vast difference obstruction. If there is obstruction of vast, is it related to hormonal imbalance at all? No. The vast difference obstruction, it's an anatomical defect. No. So, FSH and testosterone would be normal. And why this male is complaining of azoospermia? Because no sperms are coming out because of vast difference obstruction. So, hypothalamic disorder is gone because FSH is normal. Testicular disorder is gone because test testosterone is normal. Pituitary disorder is gone because FSH is normal. So answer to this question is vast difference obstruction. Answer to this question is vast difference obstruction. Fine. Next question, beta. Chinta nahi karna hai. Don't worry before exam. There are 16 days. Aag laga denge. Whatever you are revising, whatever you are revising throughout the day, revise it 
Conceptually, revise it conceptually. The main problem, beta, is what is the main problem? The main problem is we procrastinate. There are 16 days. 16 days, me aag lag jayegi. Kaise aag lag jayegi 16 days me? 16 days me kya nahi ho sakta? The problem is this is today 25th of November. Tomorrow is. Aaj kya bolenge raat ko? What we will say tonight? A kal padenge yar. 26th November kal tomorrow. Tomorrow uh, we will wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 baje uthenge subah. Aur 3 baje jaise hi neend khuli. छोड़ यार अमित सर तो कहते ही रहते हैं अपन सुबह 7 बजे उठ के रात को 12 बजे तक पढ़ लेंगे वी विल वेक अप एट 7 ओक्लॉक एंड वी विल स्टडी लेट नाइट तो अमित सर की फोटो को हटा सामने से यार चल ठीक है और सुबह 7 बजे अरे यार 9 बजे पढ़ने उठ जाएंगे वी विल वेक अप एट 9 ओक्लॉक वी विल स्टडी लेट नाइट टिल 2 एएम इन द मॉर्निंग सो वी कीप ऑन प्रोक्रास्टिनेटिंग प्रोक्रास्टिनेटिंग एंड वी डोंट रियलाइज दिस हैबिट ऑफ आवर्स वी डोंट रियलाइज दिस हैबिट ऑफ आवर्स व्हाट वी आर डूइंग how we are procrastinating various things throughout the day. Various things. Talte jate hain, talte jate hain, kal pe, kal pe, kal pe. Jisne kiya kal, din gaya tal. Jisne kiya kal, din gaya tal. Aur jisne kiya parso, beat gaye parso. Aur jo karega aaj, woi karega raaj. Jo karega aaj, woi karega raaj. Phir bolta hon, jisne kiya kal, दिन गया टल जिसने किया परसों बीत गए बरसों जो करेगा आज वही करेगा आज द पर्सन हु विल डू इट टुडे 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 विल बी द विनर लेट मी शो यू वन थिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स वी डोंट रिकॉग्नाइज आवर हैबिट ऑफ प्रोक्रास्टिनेशन समवन टोल्ड मी वन पेशेंट हैड एजोस्पर्मिया आई आस्क्ड हिम एक आदमी को एजोस्पर्मिया था मैंने पूछा शराब पीते हो क्या शराब मैंने पूछा शराब की आदत है क्या क्वेश्चन ही गलत पूछ लिया मैंने आई आस्क्ड हिम आर यू एडिक्टेड टू अल्कोहल तुम्हें शराब की आदत है क्या पता है उसका जवाब क्या था डॉक्टर साहब 15 साल से रोज शराब पी रहा हूं आज तक आदत नहीं पड़ी बताइए ये हाल है दुनिया का डॉक्टर साहब 15 साल से रोज शराब पी रहा हूं आज तक आदत ही नहीं पड़ी अभी तक याद है मुझे उसका जवाब आदत नहीं पड़ी बंदे को 15 साल से रोज शराब पी रहा है तो भैया देख लो हर रोज ये तो नहीं सोचते कि तीन घंटे बाद पढ़ेंगे वी विल वेक अप आफ्टर थ्री आवर्स वी विल डू इट टुमारो वी विल डू इट डे आफ्टर टुमारो सो प्लीज बी अवेयर ऑफ योर थॉट्स अपने विचारों को समझने की कोशिश करो हाउ योर थॉट्स आर प्लेइंग विथ यू हाउ योर थॉट्स आर बी फूलिंग यू कम ऑन बेटा कम ऑन कम ऑन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ थर्टी थ्री ईयर ओल्ड नली पेरस फीमेल a 33 year old nulliparous female presented with secondary dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia okay ji her age is 33 let's see bachche kya soch rahe hain bachcho ke dimag mein kya aa raha hai hmm bachche kya soch rahe hain bachcho ke dimag mein kya aa raha hai hmm ek minute ye password is ye dikhna band ho gaya mujhe एक सेकेंड एक सेकेंड बस 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 हाँ हो गया हो गया चलो वॉट कम्स यूर माइंड हर एज इज थर्टी थ्री हर एज इज थर्टी थ्री ईयर्स नली पेरस फीमेल प्रेजेंटेड विथ सेकेंडरी डिस्मिनोरिया एंड डिस्पेरियोनिया तो कंप्लेन आर सेकेंडरी डिस्मिनोरिया एंड डिस्पेरियोनिया एज इज थर्टी थ्री एंड शी इज नली पेरस बच्चे नहीं है अभी द फॉलोइंग ओवेरियन फाइंडिंग वॉज सीन ऑन लेप्रोस्कोपिक एग्जामिनेशन वॉट इज द लाइकली डायग्नोसिस चलो जी बताओ 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 लेट्स 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 सी 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 मेरी तो सारी चॉकलेट ही खत्म हो गई आज ओके ओके सी 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 गुड 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 यार गुड सो प्राउड ऑफ यू दिस इज एंडोमेट्रियोसे दिस इज चॉकलेट से वेरी सिंपल वेरी वेरी सिंपल एंड वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर ट्वेल्थ दिसंबर एग्जाम Very important question for 12 December exam. Either they will just give you this pic and ask you identify the image. This is laparoscopy image. You should be very particular. This is not a hysteroscopy image. This is not a ultrasound image. This is a laparoscopy image. Chocolate cyst. It looks like a chocolate. Dark terry brown. Dark terry brown chocolate cyst. So this is chocolate cyst. Chocolate cyst is seen in. Endometriosis. I will show you ultrasound image of chocolate cyst also. 
How? Because sometimes they may give you ultrasound image. Can anyone tell me ultrasound appearance of chocolates endometriotic cyst? Can anyone tell me? Wow, Rocky, tum to rock gaye yar. Cadbury silk for you. Cadbury silk for you. Rocky, Cadbury silk. Ground glass appearance. Ground glass. Very simple. Ah, ah. Very simple. Very nice. Very nice. Those who are giving correct answers, text me after this session. Your chocolates are due with me. They are due with me. Fine. So this is the case of endometriosis. This is chocolate cyst. Now let's have a look at the option. What is the likely diagnosis? Let's dissect the options. Option A is genital TB. Come on, everyone. Why this is not genital TB? We are not only studying 25 questions. Although it's going to take little more time, but my idea is to give you all the concepts related to this. So whosoever is watching this YouTube session will be benefited and will be able to pass this exam. Jobi is exam me bet raha hai. Whoever is appearing in this exam, may everyone clear this exam. May everyone clear this exam. If I am able to contribute even 1% in your journey, I will feel blessed. So my idea is to give you concepts. So why this is not genital TB? Why this is not genital TB? If answer would have been genital TB, what clues were you expecting in this question? What could be the clues in this question if you were expecting genital TB as the answer? In genital TB, hypomenorrhea. Jairaj Gandhi, Jairaj, Jairaj Gobel. Very good. Chocolate for you. Chocolate for you. Chocolate for you. No pyometra. Very good. Very good. No pyometra. Very good. Very good. Very nice. If if answer would have been genital TB, you could see some hypomenorrhea word. Very good. You could see some aminorrhea word. You could see some pyometra word. Very nice. Very nice. Can you tell me, can you tell me which genital infection, which which genital infection, which pelvic inflammatory disease can occur in a virgin girl? In a virgin girl. Otherwise, for PID, intercourse is must. PID cannot happen without intercourse. Bacha bacha janta hai. So, which pelvic infection, which pelvic infection, Tubercular infection. Because tubercular infection is a descending infection. Thoda sa khelte hai. Let's play. Let's play. Few chocolate questions. What is the most common root of spread of genital TB? Most common root of spread of genital TB? Hematogenous. In virgin TB. In virgin TB. In virgin TB. Most common root of spread of genital TB is hematogenous. This is why thoda sa khelte hai. One question, beta. One question. A 20-year-old girl presents with bilateral adenexal mass. A 20-year-old girl presents with bilateral adenexal mass and hypomenorrhea or aminorrhea. What is most likely? Answer is genital TB. Examiner has given one menstrual symptom, either hypomenorrhea or aminorrhea and bilateral adenexal math. Genital TB beta is almost invariably bilateral. Why? Because Root of spread is hematogenous and blood vessels are reaching on right fallopian tube also and on left fallopian tube also. This is, it is always bilateral. Fine. Most common primary site for genital TB is lungs, pulmonary TB. And second most common primary site is lymph node. Treatment of genital TB is for how much time? Six months. It is for six months. For first two months, how many drugs? For first two months, how many drugs? Four. Isoniazide, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol for next four months. Which drug is skipped? A neat PG question. Which drug is skipped? Ethambutol. Pyrazinamide. Pyrazinamide. Fine. Good. Chalo ji. So genital TB is not the answer because there were no clues supporting genital TB. Polycystic ovary. Polycystic ovary. Why answer is not polycystic ovary? Why answer is not polycystic ovary? Come on. Why answer is not polycystic ovary? If answer would have been polycystic ovary, what could be the supporting clue in this question? What could be very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice, Prash, Shrabni, very good, Ravi, Somesh, Selva, I know all of you, Bhavna, Mayank, Priyam, Farhat, Deepak, Abhinav, 
दिव्या श्रीनिवास योगेश रुमानी वेरी नाइस फरत शेख प्रसन्ना स्वामी कोश गुड 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 वाई आंसर इज नॉट पॉलिसी ऑलिगो मिनोरिया ऑलिगो मिनोरिया वेरी गुड ऑलिगो मिनोरिया नो हिंडसुटिजम नो रिंग ऑफ पल नो नो ऑलिगो मिनोरिया नो हिंडसुटिजम नो रिंग ऑफ पल वेरी गुड सो इट इज नॉट पॉलिसिस्टिक ओवरी आंसर इज एंडोमेट्रियोसिस कैन एन इवन टेल मी वाई इट इज नॉट पेल्विक इन्फ्लेमेटरी डिजीज एनोविलिट्री नो पीरियड यस हियर देर आर पीरियड सेकेंडरी डिस्मिनोरिया डिस्पेरियोनिया यस Why it is not pelvic inflammatory disease? Can anyone? Necklace sign, yes. That's why 15 to 25 age. Deepak, good. You rock, Deepak. Very good. It means you are thinking. You are thinking. You are floating your ideas. Very nice. Very nice. Why it is not pelvic inflammatory disease? What could be the supporting clue here? What could be the supporting clue here? polyminoria lower abdominal pain no fever no fever no polyminoria no very nice so the answer is endometriosis let me show you ultrasound appearance of this endometriotic cyst i'll show you ultrasound appearance of this endometriotic cyst look here this is the ultrasound appearance of endometriotic cyst that was laparoscopy appearance chocolate cyst this is ground glass appearance rocky you i still remember you wrote it very correctly this is ground glass appearance so this is the ground glass appearance this is the endometriotic cyst appearance on ultra sound very important question beta ground glass very important question chalo ji let me show you endometrial appearance also endometrial appearance can anyone tell me Uh, i will show you endometrium then you tell me is it it is seen in proliferative phase or secretory phase just tell me just tell me this endometrium this is a proliferative endometrium or a secretory endometrium tell me ab majha aayega ab meri chocolate bach gayi ab meri chocolate bach gayi <laughs> what is this endometrium proliferative or secretory par mera dil pata hai kab khush hota hai when i can give i can give lot of chocolate i feel blessed i feel happy which type of endometrium is this important image question beta important image question this is proliferative beta proliferative why this is proliferative endometrium because proliferative endometrium ultrasound appearance is trilaminar or three layered endometrium this is proliferative endometrium i will erase it so that you can see it once again ultrasound appearance of proliferative endometrium is triple layered also called trilaminar also called three layered endometrium i will erase you have a look at these three layers again and you all know these three layers are stratum compactum stratum spongiosum and the deepest one is stratum basalis this one is stratum basalis neat pg important question can be asked from us also during menstruation we all know endometrium is shed off and expelled out which layer of endometrium is not shed off during menstruation please please which layer which layer mike i hope you can hear me mike acha okay mike yeah yeah i will just i will just put it here i hope it is fine thank you so much whosoever told me dr gurjar mike thank you thank you so much for reminding me now you can hear voice is it okay voice is okay voice is okay basal that's very good basal is is not shed voice okay voice okay now okay basal is is not shed off so which layer of endometrium is not shed off during menstruation is stratum basal is because it is required for regeneration of endometrium for next menstrual cycle clear very good now i will show you another appearance tell me quickly 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 we'll go quickly beta this is tell me which endometrium is this which endometrium is this tell me this is secretory endometrium ultrasound appearance of secretory endometrium is hyper echoic can you see this beta can you see this is hyper i will erase it so that you can have a look once again ultrasound appearance of secretory endometrium is hyper echoic i have erased it hyper echoic means five with your radiology knowledge you know beta hyper echoic is towards white hypo echoic is towards black and absolute black is an echoic 
fine. So this is secretory endometrium. Let's move. Uh, jate, 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 jate. Last ball, last ball. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Histological appearance of proliferative endometrium. Histological. Short tubular glands. Let me show you. Histological appearance, histological appearance of proliferative endometrium. This is short tubular gland. Can you see better these short tubular gland? These are short tubular gland. Short tubular gland. Why? Because estrogen is responsible for proliferation of these endometrial gland. Estrogen is responsible for proliferation of these endometrial glands. This is why first half of menstrual cycle is called proliferative phase. Why first half of menstrual cycle is also called follicular phase? Because of follicular growth. So first half is called proliferative phase because of proliferation of endometrial gland. First half is also called follicular phase because of growth of follicle. First half is also called estrogenic phase because which hormone is predominant before ovulation? Estrogen. So this is histological appearance of proliferative phase. Answer is short tubular gland. I will show you histological appearance of secretory endometrium. Can anyone write better? Histological appearance of secretory endometrium. Histological. What happens after? After ovulation, glycogen and lipids are stored in endometrium in liquid form in tiny numerous vacuoles, 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 vacuoles. So earliest histological feature of secretory endometrium is vacuolation. So what will you see after ovulation if you are doing a histological examination? Vacuolation. Let me show you. Let me show you how these vacuoles look like. Come on. This is vacuolation. Oh my God. These are vacuoles, these are vacuoles. So histological feature, don't commit any mistake. Short tubular glands, proliferative. Vacuoles, secretory. Third MCQ, beta. Third MCQ about histology. Third MCQ about histology. Histological feature of late secretory endometrium. What happens, beta? In late secretory phase, these vacuoles become heavy and tortuous. Wow, 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 Swati, cork screw. Very nice. Chocolates for you. Cork screw, Amarnath, very nice, very nice. Cork screw, can anyone write another name of cork screw glands? Another name of cork screw glands? Cork screw glands, wow, Rachna Sawtooth, Prash cork screw, Swami cork screw, Divya cork screw, Teopalli cork sawtooth. Cork screw glands are also called sawtooth. Ab dikhata Let me show you cork screw glands or sawtooth glands. These are cork screw glands or saw tooth glands. Why? Because these vacuoles have become heavy and tortuous. These vacuoles have become heavy and tortuous. Dekho mere pyare pyare bacho. These vacuoles have become heavy and tortuous. So these are called cork screw glands or saw tooth gland. So let's quickly revise in 30 seconds, beta. Let's quickly revise in 30 seconds. Chocolate questions, five questions. Five questions, chocolate questions. I am asking you. Ultrasound appearance of proliferative endometrium. Ultrasound appearance of proliferative endometrium. Triple layered. I will revise. You all have written. Ultrasound appearance of proliferative endometrium. Triple layered or three layered or trilaminar. Ultrasound appearance of secretory endometrium. Hyperechoic. Histological appearance of proliferative endometrium. What will you see? Short tubular gland. Histological appearance of early secretory endometrium, vacuolation. Histological appearance of late secretory endometrium, cork screw glands or short tooth gland. Done, then are done, done. Chalo ji. Next question. Identify twins in this image. Very, very important question for 12th December exam. I am expecting this question. Has been asked frequently, quite often. Either examiner will give you this question or another question for which I will show you the image. Two images. So this is one question I have put. I will show you second image also. Either this will be given or that will be given. Identify twins in this image. Dichorionic, diamniotic, monochorionic, diamniotic, monochorionic, monoamniotic, Siamese. What comes to your mind? A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A
fine. So identify twins in this image, dichorionic, diamniotic. Why? Everyone is right because of very simple clue. There is a, what is seen in this image, can you see? This is a twin peak sign. This is a twin peak sign, also called lambda sign. This is a twin peak sign. How it is formed? This is how it is formed. This is a twin peak sign, also called lambda sign. This is seen in dichorionic, diamniotic. I will erase, have a look at it once again. Very, very important question. So twin peak sign, what is the name of this sign? Name of this sign is twin peak sign. This is twin peak sign. It is also called lambda sign. Twin peak sign or lambda sign. So twin peak sign or lambda sign is seen in dichorionic, diamniotic. So answer is this. If it was monochorionic, what would be the ultrasound appearance in monochorionic twins, monochorionic diamniotic? Let me show you that. Because both the images are very, 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 very important. They are very, very important. Let me show you. This one. Let me show you. This is the image. This is monochorionic beta. What is the sign? Can any, very good, very good. T sign. Very important question beta. Very important. How this T is formed? Can anyone see? This is how this T is formed. This is how this T is formed. So T sign is seen in monochorionic pregnancy. T sign. I will erase. Have a look at it once again. Have a look at it once again. This is T sign beta. How this T is formed, I'll show you. This is the placenta beta. Mere pyare, 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 pyare this is placenta. And this is the dividing amniotic membrane. So this is how this T is formed. This was placenta beta. And this is the dividing membrane, which is intertwin membrane intertwin membrane or dividing membrane. So this is how this T is formed. What you have to remember, this T sign is seen in monochorionic diamniotic, while twin peak or lambda sign is seen in dichorionic diamniotic. Important chocolate question, beta. What is the best method to diagnose chorionicity? Ultrasound, we just saw. What is the best method to diagnose chorionicity? Ultrasound. Best method to diagnose chorionicity is ultrasound beta. And what is the best time to diagnose chorionicity? Another very important question. By ultrasound, of course, ultrasound is the best method. We saw how we can diagnose chorionicity. If it is dichorionic, which sign will be seen? Twin peak sign or lambda sign? If it is monochorionic, which sign will be seen? T sign. So we are done. That ultrasound is the best modality to diagnose chorionicity. Now the second question beta, by ultrasound, what is the best time to diagnose chorionicity? So best time to diagnose 10 to 10 to 11 to 13, 10 to 12, 9 to 12, 11 to 14, 10 to 14. We keep on changing according to the latest 25th edition of Williams. This is 10 to 14 weeks now. This is 10 to 14 weeks. So the best time to diagnose chorionicity is 10 to 14 weeks and post modality to diagnose chorionicity is by ultrasound. Chalo ji, chalo. Bacho ko lagega, bhoot time laga raho mein. Chalo. Question number 10. But my idea is to give you as much as possible. Agar if you are able to solve 5 or 6 obscaini questions, I am telling you, I am nobody to say from this platform. 30 obscaini questions are asked in FMG exam. I am nobody to say, but with my experience, what I have been seeing, there are always around somewhere around 45 to 52, 45 to 52 questions in every exam. And I am also expecting the same way in December FMG exam. So I consider it the very, very important subjects. This is why I want to, I want to try my level best to give you as much as possible. Next question, a 58 year old obese, diabetic and hypertensive lady. So see, how much is the age in this question? 58 years. Age is 58 year, she is obese, one clue is obese, another clue is diabetic, another clue is hypertensive. So her age is 58, fine. Obese, built is obese. Diabetic and hypertensive. Presents with postmenopausal bleeding. Okay, G. Postmenopausal bleeding. Okay, you have started answering. Divya, Rocky, Kush, Mukesh, Subhash, Joya, Doctor. Very nice. Somesh, Kamini, Golu. 
everyone is saying, everyone is saying, see CC, whether it is C1 or C2, whether it is C1 or C2, 3B no, 3B no, Monika's 3B no, Swati 3C1, Shekhpasi 3C1, uh, Arif B no, I will dissect the options. Romani C1, good, 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 Shruti C, Athar 3B, Mayank C, Mayank beta C1 or C2? There are three, two options in C. C1 or C2? Tell me. Let's dissect the options beta. Uh, first of all, what is this? What is this? This is a case of endometrial cancer. Examiner has clearly written in the question, this is a case of endometrial cancer. And this cancer has invasion of peritoneum. Okay, fine. Extension to what? Vagina. And involvement of pelvic lymph nodes, beta. Pelvic lymph nodes. So what is the stage? Let me, let, let me explain you the stages here. Let me explain you the stage. stage uh, let me explain you in one minute, then we will come to our option. Endometrial cancer is stage 1A if endometrium is involved or less than 50% of myometrium is involved. Is stage 1B, 50% or more than 50% of myometrium involved. Is stage 2, cervix is involved. Is stage 3A, cirrhosa, adenexa, peritoneum. 3B, vagina. 3C1, pelvic lymph nodes. 3C2, paraortic lymph nodes. 4A, regional metastasis, either to anterior region, that is urinary bladder, or to posterior region, that is rectum. 4B, distant metastasis. So we are clear. Here there is cirrhosa is involved, peritoneum is involved, Vagina is involved, so 3B. Peritoneum, 3A. Vagina, 3B. And involvement of which lymph node? Pelvic lymph node. Nowhere it is written, paraortic lymph node. So what should be the answer? 3C1, beta. If pelvic lymph nodes are involved, 3C1. If paraortic lymph nodes are involved, it would have been 3C2. So answer to this question, beta, is stage 3C1. If, if Let's dissect the things, beta. If pelvic lymph nodes was not written in the option, if pelvic lymph nodes was not written in the option, answer would have been, can anyone tell me, let, let's see the variants of this question. If pelvic lymph nodes was not written in this question and examiner was finishing the question at extension to vagina, what would have been the answer beta then? 3B. Answer would have been 3B. And believe me, this question has been asked quite often. In the endometrial cancer, if vagina is involved, what is the stage? 3b. I think why examiner has asked this question very frequently because most common site of recurrence in endometrial cancer is vagina. Again a very important question beta. Most common site of recurrence in endometrial cancer is vagina. Thoda sa most common route of spread in endometrial cancer. Most common route of spread in endometrial cancer direct spread. Most common root of spread is direct spread. Which gene mutations are responsible? Which gene, thoda gene mutation khel le? Four, five disease ke, thoda tha khelte. Which gene mutations are responsible in endometrial cancer? Type 1 endometrial cancer, type 2 endometrial cancer. Type 1 is called endometroid, type 2 is called non-endometroid. Type 1 is estrogen dependent. This is why it is more common in white and obese females. P10 and KRAS. P10 and KRAS gene mutations are responsible in type 1 endometrial cancer. P53, P53 gene mutation is responsible in type 2 endometrial cancer. Which gene mutation is responsible in polycystic ovarian syndrome? PCOS, which gene mutation? Can anyone? Can anyone? Which gene mutation is responsible in PCOS? CYP21, CYP21. Which genetics is involved in uterine fibroid? Translocation between chromosome 12 and 14. Translocation between chromosome 12 and 14. Chalo ji. Chalo, chalo, chalo. Quickly. This is just an information for you. I post telegram questions daily at 9 p.m. If anyone of you, whoever is watching this session, is feeling low and not able to concentrate, you can text me. Or logo ki baat par dhyan mat dena. I receive many messages daily. Sir, my this relative is saying that my mama, bua, fufa, maternal uncle, my this, my cousin, this is saying that. And some messages were, were I was stunned. Some people were throwing stones at the study room. At the study room. Because they didn't want that student to study. This is the height of stupidity. 
इफ एनी वन इज फीलिंग लो लोगों की बात पर ध्यान मत देना डोंट लिसन टू एनी वन इफ यू आर सक्सेसफुल दे विल से अगर तुम पास हो गए ना बेटा इफ यू आर सक्सेसफुल वॉट यूर रिलेटिव एंड वॉट पीपल विल से अरे हम तो जब पैदा हुआ था ना तभी कह दिया था ये तो हीरा है हीरा जब पैदा हुआ था तभी इसके बाप को कह दिया था वेन यू आर बॉर्न वी टोल्ड योर फादर जस्ट ए डायमंड यू हैव ए डायमंड एंड इफ यू डोंट पास यू नो वॉट दे विल से पागल है सारा हरामी सारा दिन लड़कियों को लेकर चांदी चौक पे कनॉट प्लेस पे घूमता था लोग इधर से सुनो इधर से निकाल दो पीपल पीप डोंट जस्ट बॉदर अबाउट एनी वन जस्ट यूटिलाइज योर सिक्सटीन डे मेक डेली टारगेट अचीव योर डेली टारगेट इन द इवनिंग एंड सेलिब्रेट विद ए स्माइल दैट्स ऑल नथिंग डूइंग नथिंग डूइंग चलो जी ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मेथड्स आर रिकमेंडेड बाई डब्ल्यू एच ओ फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज एक्सेप्ट ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मेथड्स आर रिकमेंडेड बाई वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन for treatment of postpartum hemorrhage except very very important topic postpartum hemorrhage very very important tell me which one is the answer which one is the answer all of the following methods are recommended by who for treatment of postpartum hemorrhage except what who recommend what who recommend uh दिव्या सी मृदुल सी प्रज्ञेश सी पिंका सी मयंक सी रुमानी सी द क्वेश्चन इज ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मेथड्स आर रिकमेंडेड बाय डब्ल्यू एच ओ फॉर पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज एक्सेप्ट एक्सेप्ट सो व्हाट इज कमिंग टू योर माइंड द क्वेश्चन इज एक्सेप्ट all of the following methods are recommended by world health organization for treatment for treatment of postpartum hemorrhage except anyone mm, no one answered correctly till now uh mere bacche kahan gaye where are my students tayyab a shekhu a yes yes आकांक्षा ए यस बच्चे आ गए बच्चे आ गए रिट्स ए प्रिया ए गुड गुड सो यूट्राइन पैकिंग इज नॉट रिकमेंडेड बाय डब्ल्यू एच ओ फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज सो दिस इज द आंसर पैकिंग इज नॉट रिकमेंडेड सो व्हाट इज डब्ल्यू एच ओ प्रोटोकॉल फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज सी वी वी शुड सॉल्व द चॉकलेट क्वेश्चन ऑफ पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज वॉट आर द चॉकलेट क्वेश्चन ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस drug of choice to treat pph or drug of choice for prophylaxis of pph is oxytocin what is the drug of choice for what is the prophylactic drug of choice for postpartum hemorrhage oxytocin what is the therapeutic drug of choice for pph again oxytocin prophylactic drug of choice oxytocin 10 international units intramuscular therapeutic drug of choice 30 to 40 international units in slow iv infusion by slow iv infusion if pph has occurred and if we are treating then it's therapeutic so it is given by slow iv infusion important neat pg question can be asked from us can it be given in 5% dextrose no because it has to be given for a long time there will be depletion of sodium so it is not given just in 5% dextrose we give it with normal saline or with ringer lactate so drug of choice prophylactic drug of choice for pph oxytocin 10 international units intramuscular injection therapeutic drug of choice for pph oxytocin slow iv infusion 30 to 40 international units again a very important question beta This is very important question. Drug of choice, whether it is prophylactic or therapeutic. Most potent drug to treat PPH. Come on, most potent drug to treat PPH or best drug to treat PPH. Please, two questions we discuss. Prophylactic drug of choice, oxytocin. Therapeutic drug of choice, oxytocin. Third question, beta. If PPH is not controlled by oxytocin, what is the next step? If postpartum hemorrhage is not controlled by oxytocin, what is the next step? 
आज तो दिल्ली की सारी चॉकलेट ही खत्म हो जाएगी ऐसा लगता है वाह 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 सो यूट्राइन पैकिंग इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन डब्ल्यू एच ओ प्रोटोकॉल फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पीपीएस दैट्स ट्रू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन प्रोफाइलेक्टिक ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर पीपीएच ऑक्सीटोसिन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन थेरेपेटिक ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर पीपीएच ऑक्सीटोसिन देर इज डिफरेंस इन डोज अनदर क्वेश्चन इफ पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज इज नॉट कंट्रोल बाय ऑक्सीटोसिन व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप कार्बोप्रोस्ट व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड हेम्बेड व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड 15 मिथाइल पीजीएफ2 अल्फा कार्बोप्रोस्ट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड 15 मिथाइल पीजीएफ2 अल्फा और हेम्बेड कार्बोप्रोस्ट और हेम्बेड और 15 मिथाइल पीजीएफ टू अल्फा सो व्हाट इज द मैनेजमेंट प्रोटोकॉल आई विल टेल यू इन टू मिनट्स इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट मैनेजमेंट प्रोटोकॉल ऑफ पोस्टमार्टम हेमरेज मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ पीपीएच यू ट्राइन एटोनी सो वी हैव टू असेस वेदर टोन इज नॉर्मल और नॉट सो इफ टोन इज नॉर्मल देर विल बी चेंज इन कंसिस्टेंसी ऑफ यूट्र इट विल बिकम फर्म ग्लोब्यूलर लाइक ए क्रिकेट बॉल फाइन इफ यू आर नॉट able to palpate it's due to atony you try in atony then we give oxytocin if not controlled then carboprost carboprost can be given by 250 microgram intramuscular injection or by 100 microgram slow iv infusion this is about carboprost if it is not controlled by these medical drugs then what is the next step if postpartum hemorrhage is not controlled by these medical drugs what is the next step next step what we have to do along with this oxytocin what we are giving we are giving uterine massage so oxytocin and uterine massage they are given at the same time we know that but no where packing is done massage uterine massage is given along with oxytocin but not the packing if pph is not controlled by drugs then what we are doing then we are moving to mechanical methods what are mechanical methods mechanical methods like by manual compression of uterus by manual compression of uterus external aorta compression or military anti shock carmats what else we can try we can try balloon tamponade so by manual compression included in protocol military anti shock garment included in protocol balloon tamponade it is included in protocol balloon tamponade can be done with either sangestican blackmore tube or with condom catheter or with bakri balloon catheter i will show you this catheter they are important and 300 to 500 warm saline is filled and then they are inflated in uterus i will show you let me show you see this is how it is done these are these catheters these are these catheters they are used for balloon tamponade what we do we instill we fill we put these catheters in uterine cavity and then we fill approximately 300 bakri balloon 500 ml balloon tamponade we fill warm saline we fill warm saline in these catheters and then we put these in uterine cavity so they are causing a compression from inside this is called balloon tamponade so this intrauterine tamponade balloons they are used you can see this is a condom catheter this one is condom catheter this is a latex follies catheter this is a silicone follies catheter this is sangestican black mold tube have a look here this is the sangestican this is the sangestican black mold tube this is how it looks like and this is how this bakri balloon catheter looks like have a look this is the bakri balloon catheter fine so this is called balloon tamponade let me show you the image how we do by manual compression this is how we do by manual compression this is how we do by manual compression postpartum hemorrhage very important topic beta so it is recommended by world health or see by compressing this we are want to compress these blood vessels military anti shock garment these are military anti shock garment they are used particularly for transportation when you are referring this patient to a tertiary referral center meanwhile during the transport period for compression these military anti shock garments are used fine beta then if pph is not controlled by these measures then if she is a multi para 
वी कैन गो फॉर हिस्ट्रेक्टॉमी इफ शी इज अ मल्टी पैरा वी कैन गो फॉर हिस्ट्रेक्टॉमी एंड इफ शी इज अ प्राइमी देन वी गो फॉर बी लिंच सूचर्स और ब्रेस सूचर्स आई विल शो यू हाउ दीज बी लिंच सूचर्स और ब्रेस सूचर्स आर अप्लाइड दीज आर बी लिंच सूचर्स और ब्रेस सूचर्स बी लिंच सूचर्स और ब्रेस सूचर्स so you can see we are stretching uterus vertically we are stretching anterior and posterior walls of uterus vertically so we will attain a hemostasis there and if it is not controlled if pph is not controlled even by this then we go for uterine artery ligation and how we go for uterine artery ligation this is how first of all what is the sequence of artery is ligation first of all we go for uterine artery ligation uterine artery ligation and if it is not fruitful then we go for ovarian artery ligation ovarian artery ligation and if it also doesn't suffice the purpose then we have to ligate anterior division of internal iliac artery anterior branch of internal iliac artery beta then we go for ligation of anterior branch of internal iliac artery because uterine artery is a branch of anterior branch of internal iliac artery so important neat pg question can be asked from us what is the sequence of devascularization of these vessels what is the sequence first of all uterine artery beta followed by ovarian artery then followed by ligation of anterior division of internal iliac artery i have given you my phone number if anyone has any problem in understanding the things you can text me but don't expect the answer same day may take 2 3 days because i am giving this number i know mobile will be flooded but i want to help somehow anyways and if there is no response even after ligation of these vessels then we go for hysterectomy then we go for hysterectomy which hysterectomy is done for pph subtotal hysterectomy subtotal hysterectomy is done subtotal hysterectomy is also called supra cervical hysterectomy beta where we are removing uterus only and we are not removing cervix and if there is no response even after this subtotal hysterectomy then we go for umbrella pack or parachute pack then we go for what beta umbrella pack or parachute finally if there is no response then which pack are used umbrella pack or parachute pack umbrella pack or parachute pack are used if there is no response next question beta all of the following statements are correct about uterine inversion except all of the following statements are correct about uterine inversion except it is mostly due to mismanaged third stage of labor it is mostly due to mismanaged third stage of labor that's true that's correct uterine inversion is due to mismanaged third stage of labor that's the correct statement but examiner is asking except first a statement is correct second statement initial shock is neurogenic shock that's true if there is uterine inversion because of stretching of nerve fibers initial shock is neurogenic shock option c cause of death is hemorrhagic shock because once inversion has occurred interior is exposed out and there is excessive hemorrhage which leads to hypovolemia so cause of death is hemorrhagic shock or neurogenic shock very important questions beta what is the cause of pain in uterine inversion which shock neurogenic shock or hemorrhagic shock neurogenic shock what is the cause of death hemorrhagic shock or hypovolemic shock management is immediate hysterectomy no way management is first step is we have to resuscitate the patient and then we try to manually reposit the uterus inside that is called johnson method johnson method so we never go for hysterectomy here i will show you few images i will show you few images of uterine inversion look here have a look this is uterine inversion beta this is uterine inversion 
दिस इज फर्स्ट डिग्री इन्वर्जन दिस इज सेकेंड डिग्री इन्वर्जन दिस इज थर्ड डिग्री इन्वर्जन एंड दिस इज द फोर्थ डिग्री इन्वर्जन वॉट इज फर्स्ट डिग्री इन्वर्जन बेटा यू कैन सी देर द डिम्पलिंग हियर देर इज द डिम्पलिंग डिम्पलिंग एट द फंडर दिस इज द फर्स्ट डिग्री इन्वर्जन second degree inversion this fundus has come below the level of internal os here but it is above the level of external os third degree inversion this fundus has come below the level of external os fourth degree inversion whole uterus is turned inside out whole uterus is turned inside out so this is first degree second degree third degree and fourth degree uterine inversion and most common cause of this uterine inversion is mismanaged which stage of labor third stage of labor fine and what is the first step johnson method beta johnson method it's not hysterectomy what is johnson method manual reposition of uterus manual reposition we try to reposit uterus manually this is johnson method beta what we are doing see we have introduced our hand inside uterus so first step because it came inside out no it came inside out so with our hand we try to reposit it inside so first step immediate step is johnson method and if this johnson methods fail if this johnson's method fail the next step is o sullivan method or hydrostatic method what is this o sullivan or hydrostatic method what we are doing beta in o sullivan method we are giving pressure we are giving pressure what pressure see here what pressure have a look here we are giving pressure hydro means water beta pressure with water to push the uterus inside tube is passed into the posterior fall and if it is not successful then we go for surgery and the best surgery for uterine inversion is best surgery for uterine inversion is huntington surgery best surgery is huntington surgery so first step is manual reposition that is johnson method if it is not fruitful o sullivan hydrostatic method if it is also not fruitful then we go for huntington surgery so correct answer here is hysterectomy is not done all other statements are correct regarding uterine inversion next question beta all of the following are correct about frank breach except so frank breach is safest breach yes in frank breach thighs are flexed and knee are extended yes more common in primary yes what are the answers what halton method also huntington also spinelli also but the best one is huntington best one rachna best one is huntington you are right farat best is huntington halton is also done fine this question beta this question all of the following are correct about frank breach except frank breach is safest breach yes in frank breach thighs are flexed knees are extended yes 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 then least common variety of breach it is least common variety of breach this is the wrong statement frank breach is most common variety of breach frank breach is most common variety of breach let me let me let me show you main dikhata hu zara let me let me show you thoda sa khelte hain let's play let's play uh, let's play let's discuss uh, the breach let's discuss the breach types of breach types of breach let's discuss types of breach types of breach beta breach it can be frank breach it can be complete breach or incomplete breach i'll show you first with this and then this. frank breach uh, is a part of incomplete breach breach are of two types one is complete breach other one is incomplete breach what is a complete breach complete breach is also called flexed breach why complete breach is also called flexed breach look here beta in complete breach which is also complete breach complete breach which is also called flexed breach thighs are flexed and knee are also flexed thighs are flexed and knee are also flexed this is complete breach or flexed breach fine this is complete or flexed thighs are also flexed knee are also flexed incomplete breach is of three types incomplete breach is of three type most common variety of incomplete breach is frank breach or extended breach what is this frank breach or extended breach here thighs are flexed and knee are extended thighs are flexed and knee are extended you can see beta you can see this breach 
when thigh are flexed and knee are extended, this breach, this breach is possible if abdominal wall is compressing it tightly, beta. This tight abdominal wall is not giving it any space to flex further. This tight abdominal wall is not giving it any space to flex further. This is why these limbs are extended. This is why this frank breach or extended breach will be more common in a primary or a multi. Primary. Because in primary abdominal wall is tight. It is compressing. This is why thighs are flexed and knee are extended. This is frank breach or extended breach. Another variety of incomplete breach is knee breach. Knee breach. What is knee breach? Thigh is extended and knee are flat. Thigh extended and knee are flat. Third variety of incomplete breach is footling breach. What is a footling breach? In footling breach, thighs are extended and knee are also extended. Now you tell me, out of all these breach which we discussed, which one should be the safest breach and which one should be the most dangerous breach? Look here. This breach is most dangerous. Why this breach is most dangerous? Because there is maximum risk of umbilical cord prolapse here. Because of this space. This is why footling breach is most dangerous because of maximum risk of cord prolapse. Very important question, beta. Maximum risk of cord prolapse is seen in which breach? Footling breach. So most dangerous variety of breach is which one? Footling breach. Safest breach is frank breach or extended breach. So frank breach or extended breach, our question is, it is the safest breach. It should be more common in primary or multi? Of course, it should be more common in primary. Because in primary, tight abdominal wall is compressing it. So that statement is wrong. All of the following. Abhi, now, now I will show you. Now I will show you. Fine. So breach is of two types, complete breach and incomplete. And there is one more clue to diagnose these breach. Suppose this is a complete breach, complete breach or flexed breach. Look here. So if, if I am doing a pervaginal examination, if I am doing PV, this is a complete breach or flexed breach. If I am doing PV, my fingers are going in. So what will be palpated? What will be palpated in complete breach? If it is a complete breach, I will be able to palpate buttocks, genitalia and feet. If it is a frank breach, if it is a frank breach, fingers are going in. How will I come to know which type of breach is this? Frank breach or extended breach? What will be palpated? Buttocks and genitalia. But I won't be able to palpate feet because feet are high up. If it is the case of knee breach and if I am doing a pervaginal examination, I am doing PV. What will be PV finding? Chocolate question, single liner question. What is PV finding in knee breach? Knee. Footling breach. If I am doing PV, what is the PV finding in footling breach? Feet. So PV finding footling breach, feet. PV finding knee breach, knee. PV finding frank or extended breach, buttocks and genitalia. PV finding complete breach, buttocks, genitalia and feet. Complete breach or flex breach is more common in multi because abdominal wall is loose, lax. It is not pressing it completely, so it is giving it a space to flex further. Let's come back to our questions. I think uh, we are taking more time. Let me try to restrict. Okay. All of the following are correct about frank breach except. Frank breach is safest breach. Frank breach is safest breach. Fine. That's the correct statement. Because of least risk of cord prolapse. In frank breach, thighs are flexed, knee are extended. Pani pilu yaar. Hmm. Are camera on kar do. se kya sharman All of the following are correct about frank breach except. Safest breach, yes. Thighs are flexed, knee are extended, yes. More common in primary, yes. Least common variety of breach. This is the wrong statement. This is the wrong statement. This frank breach is most common variety of breach. So this is the correct answer. Because frank breach is most common variety of breach. Let's move. Pachche kenge, sir, paka rahe ho kya? Itna time laga ho ge? All of the following statements are correct except. Option A. Most common cause of abortion is chromosomal abnormalities. Correct statement. Most common cause of abortion is chromosomal abnormality. 
मोस्ट कॉमन टाइम ऑफ एबर्शन इस फर्स्ट टाइम एस्टर कितना टाइम हो गया यार सवा दो घंटे हो गए थोड़ा सा ज़्यादा हो गया थोड़ा सा जल्दी कर लेते हैं थोड़ा सा जल्दी नहीं तो कहोगे इतने टाइम में पढ़ा रहे हो सर मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ एबर्शन इज क्रोमोजोमल एबनॉर्मेलिटीज करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट एंड मोस्ट कॉमन टाइम ऑफ एबर्शन इज फर्स्ट टाइम एस्टर एंड मैक्मम एबर्शन सेकर अप टू एट वीक्स मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ रिकरेंट एबॉर्शन इज सर्वाइकल इनकम्पिटेंस दैट्स ट्रू हिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्सपल्शन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कंसेप्शन इज एबसेंट इन इनकम्प्लीट एबॉर्शन दिस इज दिस इज दिस इज दिस इज रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट फीटर से थोड़ा सा खेल लेंगे इसके बाद वील प्ले फॉर टू मिनट्स देन यू विल हैव द कंसेप्ट फीटस इज डेड इन मिस्ड एबॉर्शन दैट्स द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट फीटस इज डेड इन मिस्ड एबॉर्शन दैट्स द करेक्ट आंसर मनीष श्रुति किलर रेड्स शबनी सी वेरी गुड मेरे बच्चे सब जानते हैं माय स्टूडेंट्स नो एवरीथिंग वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस करेक्ट आंसर इज सी बिकॉज एवरीवन नो बच्चा बच्चा जानता है हिस्ट्री ऑफ एक्सपल्शन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कंसेप्शन इज प्रेजेंट इन इनकम्प्लीट एबॉर्शन अरे बाबा रे वॉट विल शी से डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर साहब आई पास सम पीसेस फर्स्ट थिंग She is going to tell us, doctor. Sir, I pass some pieces. We will say okay, ji. We will do a ultrasound, and then we will say, oh, abhi to under reh gaya. There is something inside. Some products of conception are retained inside. That is called an incomplete abortion. So she will definitely say, doctor. Sir, doctor. Sir, I passed pieces. So history of expulsion of products of conception will be present if it is the case of incomplete abortion. So answer C is the wrong statement. Most common cause of abortion chromosomal. That's true. Most common time first trimester. Most common cause of recurrent cervical incompetence. Fetus is dead in missed abortion. So this is the answer. Let's move to other question. A 24 years old girl with nine weeks seminorrhea and positive urine pregnancy test presents with shock. most likely diagnosis is she is a 24 years well she is a young girl with 9 weeks seminorrhea okay fine and positive urine pregnancy test so she is pregnant presents with shock most likely diagnosis see this question is a this question is little tricky examiner has not written whether uterine cavity is empty whether there is adnexal mass as we solved one question related to ectopic pregnancy you know the size of ectopic was given 3 cm no cardiac activity was written answer to that question was intramuscular methotrexate but in this question examiner is playing a googly what googly you see examiner is not saying that uterine cavity is empty examiner is not saying that there is adrenal adnexal mass examiner ne to chhakka hi maar diya examiner had hit a big stroke so examiner has taken you to the level of shock oh my god examiner has taken you to the level of shock just by giving the history of amenorrhea and positive urine pregnancy test so she is pregnant anyway she is pregnant that's for sure amenorrhea and positive urine pregnancy test so cause of her amenorrhea is pregnancy that examiner is telling us the examiner is giving just one clue shock so this is pregnancy with shock let us see the options ruptured ectopic pregnancy yes we know in ruptured ectopic pregnancy there occur shock because of massive bleeding inside massive hemoperitoneum and this blood even irritates shoulder that's called danforth sign her vitals are not stable and bp start falling drastically because ectopic mein aise bleeding hota hai andar beta jaise kisi ne nal khola chhod diya this bleeding inside as if a tap is open nal khola chhod diya so it's a life saving surgery if it is the case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy we have to immediately go for a laparotomy this is why in cases of ruptured ectopic pregnancy beta we never do laparoscopy because laparoscopy you know with your surgery knowledge it takes time for preparation you have to create a new peritoneum and then various needle and then cabra and everything so operation theater preparation takes a very long time in laparoscopy this is why if it is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy we do can't afford to waste a single minute and we have to go for immediate laparotomy because it is a life saving surgery usko bachana hai zindagi bachani fine so ruptured ectopic pregnancy second option abruptio placenti look here abruptio placenti definition also we know bleeding into genital tract after the age of viability and this is just a 9 weeks amenorrhea 
दिस इज जस्ट ए नाइन वीक्स अमीनोरिया नाइन वीक्स अमीनोरिया बच्चों बच्चों आई वॉज जस्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग द कंसेप्ट लेट मी सी द आंसर सो एब्रप्शियो प्लेसेंटी इट कांट बी एट नाइन वीक्स फाइन प्लेसेंटा प्रेविया देर इज नो रीजन फॉर शॉक इन प्लेसेंटा प्रेविया नो रीजन फॉर शॉक इन केसेज ऑफ प्लेसेंटा प्रेविया थ्रेटेंड अबर्शन If it is the case of threatened abortion, again, what is the complaint in threatened abortion? Complaint in threatened abortion is mild bleeding per vagina. And when we do a abdominal examination, fundal height is equal to period of amenorrhea. Internal loss is closed. Placenta previa we can easily diagnose by ultrasound. Abruptio placenti it is diagnosed with clinical correlation and ultrasound. Few important questions. My heart is not beating. I am not running. I am not running. I am not running. One minute. Mein. Abruptio placenti important question. What is the most important risk factor for abruptio? History of previous abruptio. What is the most important risk factor for placenta previa? History of previous placenta previa. Fine, beta. So answer here is ruptured ectopic pregnancy. जाते जाते बात समझ लो. Record वो तोड़ते हैं जिनकी रगों में खून के साथ जुनून दौड़ता है. खून तो सबकी रगों में दौड़ता है यार. मेरी रगों में भी खून दौड़ रहा है तुम्हारी रगों में भी खून दौड़ रहा है रिकॉर्ड वही तोड़ते हैं जिनकी रगों में खून के साथ जुनून दौड़ता है पागल नहीं थे वो लोग वेदर इट इज बिल गेट्स और मार्क चुकेरबर्ग और जेफ बेजोस और एलन मार्क दे आर मेड अबाउट व्हाट दे आर डूइंग उनकी रगों में केवल खून नहीं दौड़ रहा जुनून दौड़ रहा है वही रिकॉर्ड तोड़ रहे हैं एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक अला डिजिटल ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म से दुनिया के सबसे रईस आदमी बन गए सोचो क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी A 32-year-old lady, a 32-year-old lady presents at 35 weeks pregnancy. Her age is 32. Her age is 32 years. She is presenting at 35 weeks pregnancy, 35 weeks, with severe bleeding per vagina. Her complaint is severe bleeding per vagina. Severe bleeding per vagina. Ultrasound shows type three. placenta previa type 3 her complaint is severe bleeding per vaginum and ultrasound is showing type 3 placenta previa best management is see the question very carefully 35 weeks severe bleeding complaint is severe bleeding shake kamlesh tachna joya everyone is saying a immediate cesarean section correct answer beta manish a purvi a everyone a everyone is going in favor of a and the answer is a immediate cs why answer is immediate cs because 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 although expectant management we are waiting till 37 weeks if vitals are stable and if there is no severe bleeding before 37 weeks we have to do active management if vitals are not stable if there is severe bleeding so ultrasound is showing severe type 3 placenta previa and there is severe bleeding so we have to do active intervention now because it is type 3 placenta previa immediate cesarean section immediate cs classical cs is not done in placenta previa conservative management could be done if there was no severe bleeding pv immediate induction of labor she is having severe bleeding type 3 placenta previa for minor degree placenta previa that is type 1 and type 2 anterior vaginal delivery For major degree placenta previa, that is type two posterior, type three and type four cesarean section. And how this uh, uh, immediate cesarean section is done? Just because of one clue here, type three placenta previa. Don't be afraid of struggles. Just remember this line: "Jo sangharsh se parichit nahi hua, itihas kawa hai. Wo kabi bhi charchit nahi hua." These sixteen days. You are going through the struggling phase. It's easy for me to say here, easy for me to say here everything. But I am telling you, whatever I am telling you, nothing is YouTube-ish. In these sixteen days, आग लगा दो, सुबह से शाम पढ़ डालो, study, study, revise, 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 and re-revise before sleeping. जो भी संगठन से परिचित नहीं हुआ. इतिहास पक्का गवाह है वो कभी भी चर्चित नहीं हुआ और याद रखना जो पानी से नहाते हैं वो लिबास बदलते हैं लेकिन जो पसीने से नहाते हैं वो इतिहास बदलते हैं याद रखना चलो जी क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवनटीन क्वेश्चन सेवनटीन अ हाइपर टेंसिव लेडी प्रेजेंट सेट एट मंथ्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी शी इज ए हाइपर टेंसिव लेडी प्रेजेंट सेट एट मंथ्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी विद कंप्लेन्ट्स ऑफ एबडोमिनल पेन 
so what's given she is hypertensive 8 months of pregnancy with complaints of abdominal pain on examination uterine size is more than period of amenorrhea uterine size is more than period of amenorrhea with absent fetal heart sound so fundal height is more than period of amenorrhea fetal parts are also not palpable fetal heart sounds not audible fetal parts not palpable what is this tell me tell me tell me tell me this is a case of this is a case of yes 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 please 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 what is this what is this this is not polyhydramnia in polyhydramnia fundal height will be more than period of amenorrhea many students writing polyhydramnia in polyhydramnia fundal height will be more than period of amenorrhea but fetal parts will be palpable fetal heart sounds will be audible fine and there is no reason for abdominal pain in polyhydramnia concealed abruptio placenti concealed abruptio placenti fundal height will be more than period of amenorrhea yes there will be abdominal pain because abdomen is hard and tender uterus is hard and tender because of thromboplastin which is acting as uterotonic fine fetal heart sound may not be audible fetal parts may not be palpable so this can be concealed abruptio placenti revealed abruptio placenti revealed abruptio placenti there has to be bleeding pv because passage is open nowhere in this question it is written bleeding pv uterine rupture in case of uterine rupture fetal parts are palpated very easily because see if uterus ruptures fetus will come superficial no if fetus if uterus is ruptured fetus will come superficially haath lagaya bachcha dikha fetal parts will easily be palpable in uterine rupture so answer to this question is concealed abruptio placenti next question beta next question according to who what is recommended at the time of labor what is recommended at the time of labor tell me according to world health organization according to who according to who what is recommended tell me answer of this question i will just show you that what is that maneuver according to who come on come on bachcho 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 we will finish in 30 minutes uh, what is recommended what is recommended come on come on according to who what is recommended at the time of labor okay episiotomy episiotomy is not recommended by world health organization at the time of labor episiotomy is not mandatory episiotomy is not mandatory it is not episiotomy is given only if she is a primary with rigid perineum or we are doing breech or we are doing some instrumental delivery or it is a case of shoulder dystocia drill then only episiotomy is given episiotomy is never given routinely it is not recommended by who fine second lithotomy position no according to latest 25th edition of williams lithotomy position is not mandatory lithotomy position is not mandatory modified ritgen maneuver yes this is recommended by who but we know we will not choose our option unless we see all four options till last word because we never know fourth option may be the best option fourth option here is maintain deflection of head we are always maintaining flexion of head before extension we are always maintaining flexion of head so answer to this question is modified ritgen maneuver i will show you how this modified ritgen maneuver is done i'll just show you how this modified ritgen maneuver is done you know very well what happens during labor uh, we discuss in our classes and everything engagement then descent then flexion then internal rotation after internal rotation there occur crowning what is crowning crowning is permanent visualization of scalp hair permanent visualization because what is happening fetus is coming down when uterine contraction is over it is going up when good contraction comes it again comes down and when contraction recedes it again recedes up so crowning is permanent visualization of scalp hair even when uterine contraction is over and what is done at the level of crowning who recommend modified ritgen maneuver and what else we are doing we are giving which pressure fundal pressure 
we are giving fundal pressure to push. Three things are done at the level of crowning. One is modified red chain maneuver. Second, we are giving fundal pressure. And third, we are encouraging her to bear down more and more, more and more. Hum upar se dhakka laga rahe hain, fundal pressure. Hum modified red chain maneuver kar rahe hain. Aur hum usko bol rahe hain ki jor lagao. If you have gone to labor room in medical colleges, government medical colleges, you must have heard a characteristic noise there. What those sisters and I are doing at the level of crowning. What is this? What is this? Fundal pressure. And what we are doing? Modified rich chain maneuver. What is this modified rich chain maneuver? Now what head is delivered by extension? Head in cephalic is delivered by extension. So how to promote this extension at the level of crowning? We give pressure on occiput and we pull the chin. What we are doing? We are pulling the chin. We are pulling the chin like this and giving pressure at occiput to facilitate extension. This is called modified rich chin maneuver. So which maneuver is recommended by WHO at the level of crowning? This is modified rich chin maneuver. Fine, beta. चलो जी बहुत टाइम लग जाएगा नहीं तो चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कम ऑन अ ट्वेंटी टू ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल प्रेजेंट्स विथ प्राइमरी एमिनोरिया एंड नॉर्मल ब्रेस्ट डेवलपमेंट बिकॉज ओनली सिक्सटीन डेज लेफ्ट फॉर योर एग्जाम दिस इज वाई आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेक मच ऑफ द टाइम सो आई शुड रेस्ट्रिक्ट बिकॉज योर टाइम इज वेरी प्रेशर If any student has any problem, any difficulty, you can text me. Anyway, a 22-year-old girl presents with primary amenorrhea and normal breast development. What is the next step? Come on, tell me. Very important question. Very important. A 22-year-old girl. A 22-year-old girl. Did I? No. इसके बाद भी नहीं चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन में आ जाएगा ट्वेंटी टू ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल प्रेजेंट्स विद प्राइमरी एमिनोरिया एंड नॉर्मल बेस्ट डेवलपमेंट व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप चलो जी बताओ अल्ट्रासाउंड वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस अल्ट्रासाउंड इज द करेक्ट आंसर बिकॉज व्हाट इज द डायग्नोस्टिक प्रोटोकॉल ऑफ प्राइमरी एमिनोरिया इफ ए गर्ल प्रेजेंट्स विद प्राइमरी एमिनोरिया एंड नॉर्मल सेकेंडरी सेक्सुअल करेक्टर्स वी डू अल्ट्रासाउंड Purpose of ultrasound is to see whether uterus is present or absent. If uterus is present, cryptomenorrhea. If uterus is absent, Mullerian agenesis or testicular feminization syndrome. Two very important questions. Best clinical method to differentiate Mullerian agenesis and testicular feminization syndrome is absent axillary pubic hairs in testicular feminization syndrome. Overall best method. If the word clinical is not written in the question, best method to differentiate Mullerian agenesis and testicular feminization syndrome answer would be answer would be karyotyping. So answer to This question is ultrasound. चलो जी जाते जाते ये कायनात उसी की दीवानी बन गई सपने सजाए जिसने बड़े अपनी चाह में देखो कैसे सजाते हैं सपने बड़े अपनी चाह में देखो इस बिल्ली को ये अपने आप को शेर देख रही है सी दिस सी दिस सी दिस कैट सी दिस कैट हाउ दिस कैट इमेज हर सेल्फ एज ए लॉय ये कायनात उसी की दीवानी बन गई सपने सजाए जिसने बड़े अपनी राह में बिल्ली अपने आप को शेर देख रही है सोलह दिन आग लगा दो पानी में सोलह दिन ऐसे ही देखो अपने आप को और आग लगा दो पानी में और बता दो उन सब लोगों को जो कुछ कहना चाहते हैं तुमसे फाइन चलो जी चलो जी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एट ईयर ओल्ड लेडी प्रेजेंट विथ सेकेंडरी एमिनोरिया सो हर एज इज हर एज इज ट्वेंटी If anyone has any difficulty in understanding any concept, because this time I have to rush a little quickly, you can ask me. I'll answer. A 28-year-old lady present with because your time is precious. The 16 days before exam. A 28-year-old lady present with secondary amenorrhea. So her complaint is secondary amenorrhea. Her progesterone challenge test is negative. Okay, ji. What is the next step? What is the diagnostic protocol of secondary amenorrhea? What is the diagnostic protocol of secondary amenorrhea? Let's let, let's thoda sa khelte hain. Just one minute play. Mera mani nahi manta khele bina. One minute play. One minute play. One minute play. 
A patient presents to you with secondary amenorrhea. What is the next step? Urine pregnancy test. Second question. A patient presents to you with secondary amenorrhea and negative urine pregnancy test. What is the next step? I'm, I'm looking at the answers. What you are writing, what you are writing. Shams Hamidi, Va Guruji Va. Thank you, Ji. Thank you, Ji. Thank you, Shams. Proud of you. Sabse chaheto mein se ho tum mere. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. A, a girl presents with 35 year, 30 year, presents with secondary amenorrhea. What is the next step? You're in pregnancy test. Second question. Whatever I'm speaking in next two minutes, one question, at least one question on 12th of December. If a lady presents with secondary amenorrhea and her urine pregnancy test is negative, what is the next step? TSH and prolactin. Third question. A lady presents with secondary amenorrhea, her urine pregnancy test is negative, TSH and prolactin are within normal limits, what is the next step? Progesterone challenge test. Another question. A lady presents with secondary amenorrhea, UPT is negative, TSH and prolactin are within normal limits, progesterone challenge test is positive. Positive means she had bleeding after progesterone challenge test. What is most likely? If progesterone challenge test is positive, it indicates that the cause of her secondary amenorrhea was an ovulation. And most common cause of an ovulation today from North Pole to South Pole is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is also called esteen Leventhal syndrome. Dun, 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 dun. Next question. A lady presents with secondary amenorrhea, her urine pregnancy test is negative, TSH and prolactin are within normal limits, progesterone challenge test is negative, what is the next step? Now answer is combined estrogen progesterone challenge test. We are giving both estrogen and progesterone. Next question. A lady presents with secondary amenorrhea, UPT negative, TSH prolactin within normal limits, progesterone challenge test negative, estrogen progesterone combined challenge test negative. Estrogen progesterone combined challenge test also negative. What is most likely? Asherman syndrome or endometrial TB? Why and how? Uh, we have discussed in great detail multiple times, but uh, today also I want to complete the session uh, soon because I have taken much of your time. So answer is Asherman syndrome. Why and how? If anyone wants to know, text me, phone me, uh, text me, uh, WhatsApp me. Then if combined estrogen progesterone challenge test is positive, what is the next step? Estimation of FSH level. Next question. If FSH levels are less, what is the next step? If FSH are less, it is either hypothalamic or pituitary disorder. Then either MRI has to be done or injection GnRH has to be given. If FSH levels are high, what comes to your mind? It is a case of premature ovarian failure. Another question. If FSH levels are high in a case of secondary amenorrhea and she wants to conceive, bachcha bhi chahiye, ovary bhi fail ho gai, bachcha bhi chahiye. What is the next step? In vitro fertilization with donor oocytes. In vitro fertilization with donor oocytes. While if a female with Mullerian agenesis, if she wants to conceive, usko bachcha chahiye, then the management is in vitro fertilization with her own oocyte. So in Mullerian agenesis, we do IVF with her own oocytes. While in cases of premature ovarian failure, IVF would be done with donor oocytes because its ovary to fail. Ho gai. Got it? Chalo ji. Chalo. So answer to this question, her progesterone challenge test is negative. What is the next step? Combined estrogen and progesterone challenge test. Next question. Jate jate ek ball khel ke jate hain. लिख दो अपने हौसले से अपनी कहानी और बोल दो किस्मत को कि दम हो तो मिटा कर दिखा इट्स टाइम ओनली टू रिवाइज एंड इग्नोर रेस्ट ऑफ द थॉट 16 डेज पिटा जस्ट डोंट लिसन टू एनीवन जस्ट मेक योर डेली टारगेट एवरीडे टारगेट एंड अचीव इट बाय द इवनिंग एंड सेलिब्रेट दैट अचीवमेंट विद अ स्माइल लिख दो अपने हौसले से अपनी कहानी और बोल दो किस्मत को कि है दम तो मिटा कर देखा हमने तो लिख दी अपनी कहानी चलो जी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग शोल्डर डिस्टोशिया ड्रिल एक्सेप्ट फाइन शोल्डर डिस्टोशिया ड्रिल ओके जी शोल्डर डिस्टोशिया ड्रिल चलो विद इन इसमें टू मिनट्स लगेगा दो मिनट मेरे को समझाना पड़ेगा इट नीड्स टू मिनट्स Shoulder dystocia, what is shoulder dystocia? 
what is shoulder dystocia shoulder dystocia is if difference in shoulder dystocia is if time interval between delivery of head if time interval between delivery of head and shoulder is more than 1 minute this is called shoulder dystocia what is the clinical suspicion of shoulder dystocia look here beta head will be delivered out but because it is a case of shoulder dystocia which happens in diabetes and other conditions the shoulders are stuck so what is the clinical suspicion of shoulder dystocia it's called turtle sign which sign beta clinical suspicion of shoulder dystocia is by which sign turtle sign this head will come out and will proceed back inside kachua dekha beta kachua turtle have you seen the neck of turtle neck of turtle this is turtle sign turtle sign so clinical suspicion of shoulder dystocia is by which sign turtle sign what is shoulder dystocia if time interval between delivery of head and delivery of shoulder is more than 1 minute that is shoulder dystocia now what is the shoulder dystocia drill in normal labor we give which pressure fundal pressure now here what has happened shoulders are stuck so fund if you give fundal pressure you will make the situation even worse so which pressure is given supra pubic pressure one now the question is first maneuver or best maneuver for shoulder dystocia drill now this is not fetus this is mother for a moment this is mother for a moment first management or best management for shoulder dystocia drill is mac roberts maneuver what is this mac roberts maneuver sudden flexion and abduction sudden flexion and abduction of maternal lower limbs so vulval outlet is broadened sacrum is straightened and it is likely that shoulders may be delivered out so first maneuver question number 1 first maneuver in shoulder dystocia drill mac roberts maneuver question number 2 best maneuver in shoulder dystocia drill mac roberts maneuver question number 3 what is the complication of mac roberts maneuver due to sudden abduction due to sudden abduction of lower limb there can be injury to lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh there can be injury to which nerve this is mcq this is mcq there can be injury to lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh fine beta next question if mac roberts maneuver fails what is the next step if mac roberts maneuver fail the next step is woods cork screw maneuver what is this woods cork screw maneuver woods cork screw we are thinking we are anticipating oh it is possible there might be less fat deposited over opposite shoulder so what we do kya karte hain dil hai ki manta nahi what we do we rotate this because we are anticipating oh there might be less fat over opposite side so we rotate it by 180 degree like a cork screw this is woods cork screw maneuver if it also fails we don't do gaskin these days if it also fails the next step is javanali what is javanali we push the head inside we push the head inside and we take out by cesarean section important mcqs in shoulder dystocia drill most common maternal complication of shoulder dystocia drill mai bolta gaya yaar tumse baat nahi kar paya maine socha thoda sa padha deta most common complication of shoulder dystocia drill postpartum hamare most common maternal complication most common neonatal complication of shoulder dystocia drill brachial plexus injury most common maternal complication of twin pregnancy postpartum hemorrhage same most common maternal complication of multipetal pregnancy ppl most common maternal complication of shoulder dystocia drill ppl most common neonatal complication most common neonatal complication of multipetal pregnancy prematurity most common neonatal complication of shoulder dystocia drill brachial plexus injury brachial plexus injury chalo ji bahut time le liya bachcho ka 16 din bache hai na chalo all of the following are correct regarding shoulder dystocia drill except mac roberts maneuver yes it is done woods cork screw maneuver yes it is done fundal pressure is not given which pressure is given supra pubic pressure directly over shoulder may result in pps that's true so these are wrong because question is except so answer is fundal pressure next question ji what is the most common karyotype with given ultrasound image this question is a very very important question for our exam and i must tell you this question was asked the same way 
in November 2021, INICT. November 2021, INICT, this question was asked word by word, so I have put it for you because this question is a very important question for our FMG exam also. In our FMG exam, they usually give this image and ask us, identify this image. In INICT in November only, they have given this question like this, what is the most common karyotype with given ultrasound image? So first of all, we need to identify what is this ultrasound image. This ultrasound image is a vesicular mole or a hydratiform mole image, and this ultrasound appearance is called snow storm appearance, complete mole, complete mole, Rahul C, uh, Rahul C wrong, Rahul C wrong, 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 wrong. Bhaiya, bhaiya, mere bacho, 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 bacho. This is complete mole, also called hydratidiform mole, also called vesicular mole, also called mola hydratidosa. It is not dosa, it is mola hydratidosa. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, it is complete mole. So what is the most common chromosomal configuration of complete mole? It is 46XXB. Very good. Farhat B, Mozif B, Akanksha, Akanksha, no, no, no. Amal, hydratiform mole, Shivani, good. Putkaka, good. Sunil, yes, 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 Tayyab, yeah, yeah, Joya, yeah, 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 Rumani, good, Rumani, good, 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 good. So this is 46 exact. In 90% cases, chromosomal configuration of complete mole is 46 exact. This is complete mole. And if it was partial mole, then answer would have been 69XXY. So 69XXY is most common chromosomal configuration of partial mole. And this is complete mole. This is which mole? This is complete mole. In complete mole, most common chromosomal configuration is 46XX. Chalo ji. Another very important question, beta. Given ultrasound image is included in which diagnostic criteria? So first of all, tell me this ultrasound image is image of polycystic ovarian syndrome. We discussed one question initially, number of follicles was 14 to 15, size of follicles was somewhere around 3 to 8 mm, that was PCOS question. Answer to that was ethinylestradiol plus fourth generation progesterone cyproterone acetate. So tell me answer to this question, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everyone is saying B, everyone is saying B, Mere bachyon kahan gaye tum? Mere bachyon kahan gaye tum? Kahan ho mere bachyon? Mere bachyon? Dubara se padho. Given ultrasound image is included in which diagnostic criteria? Kisne likha D? Kisne likha D? Alle wah, alle wah. Oh, Jaya D, J D, Jisne Likha, Rachna D, Vijay Kumar D, Linda D, Jisne Likha D, Uski Ho Gai, 10 chocolates, 10 chocolates for the one who has written D, 10 chocolates, 10, 10 chocolates for the one who has written D. See, see, I made this question just today morning only. Given ultrasound image is included in which diagnostic criteria? This is a polycystic ovarian syndrome. We all know this is a polycystic ovarian syndrome. But do you remember Rotterdam criteria? You started writing Rotterdam, Rotterdam, Rotterdam. Rotterdam criteria, three points. Three points in Rotterdam criteria. One is menstrual dysfunction, either oligomenorrhea or aminorrhea. Second point of Rotterdam criteria, I'm going to two minutes. Second point of Rotterdam criteria, clinical or biochemical evidence of increased androgen. So clinical evidence is called hyperandrogenism, biochemical evidence is called hyperandrogenemia. Mia means blood ke andar, khun ke andar. Third is ultrasound. Ajao, jaldi se, jaldi, jaldi, look, 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 suno, 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 listen, listen, listen. What about ultrasound appearance? Number of follicles should be at least 12, okay G. Size of follicles should be between 2 to 9 mm, okay G. Ovarian volume should be at least 10 cc. But, 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 necklace sign or a string of pearl sign, although it is seen in PCOS, but it is not a diagnostic criteria of PCOS. 
it is not included in Rotterdam criteria. We have clearly written in our notes also. And one more thing, these ultrasound features, even if they are present only in one ovary, they are diagnostic of PCOS. But necklace sign, this is necklace sign. If the question is necklace sign is seen in, answer would be PCOS. Don't confuse. If the question is necklace sign or a string of pulse sign on ultrasound is seen in, answer would be PCOS. But this is not included in diagnostic criteria of PCOS. So answer is none. Just ne likha D, uski hui 10 chocolate. Chalo ji. Jate jate, chalte chalte. In this world of brainstorming thoughts, Take your awareness to breathing for at least 15 minutes in a day. 16 days before examination, I will tell you to do it just for 2 or 3 or 4 minutes in a day. Just take your awareness to your breathing. Stillness is where creativity and solution to problems are found. Fine, brother? Chalo ji. Female external genitalia developed due to. They developed due to what? They developed due to what? Absence of they developed due to what? Absence of Aha, aha Amal fell in googly trap Yes <laughs> Vatsala fallen for trap Yes, yes And you were asking Vatsala three days back Yes Chalo ji Female external genitalia developed due to Tell me the answer Tell me the answer Tell me the answer D, D, D. Mere bachche jante hain. This is quite simple. So female external genitalia developed due to absence of dihydrotestosterone while male external genitalia developed due to presence of dihydrotestosterone. Presence of dihydrotestosterone. Jate jate, one more minute. Mera man nahi manta padhae vena. One more minute. Jara thoda sa khe, khe lete hai. One minute play. Male and female, how they develop? Just thoda sa padha raun sun lena yaar one minute question aayega. Bara tarik ko question aara hai. If SRY complex is present, testis will be formed. Second question. SRY complex is situated on short arm of Y chromosome. If it is present, testis will develop. Testis has two cells. Sertoli cells and Leydig cell. Sertoli cells sunte rehna question aara hai. Sertoli cells secrete mullerian inhibiting factor. Which will cause suppression of mullerian duct. Duct will be suppressed, but remnant of Mullerian duct in males would be appendix of testis and hydrated of morgagni. Testis has leading cells also with secret testosterone. Under influence of testosterone, embryologically, what develop? Wolfian duct. What develops from Wolfian duct? Male internal genital organs. What are these? Vast difference. Epididymis, seminalvus cycles, ejaculatory duct. Testosterone is converted to dihydrotestosterone by 5-alpha reductase. And what develops with? Presence of dihydrotestosterone, male external genital organs. Dun 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 dun. Second possibility, if SRY complex is absent, it gives signal for formation of ovary. They are manufactured. Testis and ovary both are manufactured in same factory. What is the name of factory? Genital ridge. Genital ridge makes testis. Genital ridge makes ovary. But what genital ridge will make will depend on order received. Paisa kis chich ki hai bhai? Testis banao ya ovary? So genital ridge will make testis or ovary. It will depend on the order received to genital ridge. And what order will be given to genital ridge? If SRY complex is present, make testis. If SRY complex is absent, make ovary. So testis develops due to, read the question very carefully. Testis develops due to presence of SRY complex. Ovary develops due to absence of SRY complex. Fine, beta. So, if SRY complex is absent, ovary will develop. In ovary, there is no Sertoli cell. There is no Leydig cell. No Sertoli cell. So, no Mullerian inhibiting factor. So, Mullerian duct will develop. And what will develop from Mullerian duct? Female internal genital organs. What are these? Uterus, cervix, fallopian tube, upper two-third of vagina. No testosterone. So, no dihydrotestosterone. What will happen due to absence of dihydrotestosterone? What will develop? Female external genitalia. So the question is, female external genitalia developed due to absence of dihydrotestosterone. Male external genitalia developed due to presence of dihydrotestosterone. Wolfian duct develop under influence of testosterone. Mullerian duct develops due to absence of Mullerian inhibiting factor. Fine. And Mullerian inhibiting factor is secreted by Sertoli cells. 
Similarly, in females, because there is no testosterone, Wolfian duct will be suppressed. What are the remnants of Wolfian duct in females? From upper part of Wolfian duct, epipheron. From lower part of Wolfian duct, peripheron. From middle part of Wolfian duct, Gartner's duct. Shallow gene. जाते जाते एक खुदा तू बोल दे तेरे बादलों को एक खुदा तू बोल दे तेरे बादलों को मेरे स्टूडेंट्स पढ़ रहे हैं थोड़ी बारिश की जाए बिंदास रिवाइज करो यार रिवाइज बिंदास मैं तो खुदा से रोज प्रार्थना करता हूँ सब पास हो जाए एवरीवन शुड पास मेरे स्टूडेंट्स पढ़ रहे हैं थोड़ी बारिश हो जाए चलो जी Last question of the session. A 32-year-old lady, a 32-year-old lady presents with delayed second stage of labor. A 32-year-old lady presents with delayed second stage of labor and station is plus two. What is the next step? See, very simple. We discussed everything in detail in labor. And this is nine o'clock already, so I will just answer this question. Okay, uh, although wanted to explain everything, but you know, this is not the time. This is not the time. The only thing, actually, no, what's going on? Chal, कोई बात नहीं. हाँ जी. The question is a 32 year old lady presents with delayed second stage of labor and station is plus 2 what is the next step if it is a case of delayed second stage of labor if it is a case of delayed second stage of labor what is the management what we have to look for if it is a case of delayed second thoda sa padha deta hu jaate jaate 1 minute yaar man nahi maan raha chalo chalo what we have to see if it is a case of delayed second stage of labor What is the normal duration of second stage in multi up to 30 minutes in primary up to 1 hour when you call it delayed in primary if it is up to 2 hours taking 2 hours or more than that in multi if it is taking 1 hour or more than that if second stage is delayed what we have to look for we have to look for station if station is plus 2 or more than plus 2 we go for forceps application or ventus application If station is less than plus two, then cesarean section is done. So in our question, it is clearly written that station is plus two. Then how you are going to take it out by force? If in this question only it was written that station is minus something, plus one or minus, then we would have done cesarean. So management of delayed second stage of labor. If station is less than plus two, cesarean section. If station is plus two or more than plus two. By forceps application. Don't confuse delayed second stage of labor with arrest of second stage. Management for arrest of second stage of labor is cesarean section, immediate cesarean section. Arrest of second stage of labor is also called obstructed labor. Fine. So I tried my level best to contribute to some extent what I could do in these three hours, and I am praying God, Ishwar, Allah, Wahe Guru. जीसस सबसे प्रार्थना करता हूं आई प्रे गॉड ईश्वर अल्लाह वाहे गुरु जीसस मे एवरी वन पास दिस एग्जाम मे एवरी वन बी हेल्दी हैप्पी एंड सक्सेसफुल विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट फ्रॉम बॉटम ऑफ माय हार्ट एंड फ्रॉम एंटायर मिस्ड फैमिली थैंक यू वेरी मच बब्बा